The following is a presentation of the IHSA Television Network. Wheaton Warrenville South looking to defend their state title from a year ago. They're in the championship game for the fourth time in five years. On the other side, the Lake Zurich Bears. They won it in 2007. They are in the championship game for the third time in the last five years. 7A title game right now. There's that extra little buzz right now at Memorial Stadium here at the University of Illinois because the state's top-ranked team, the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers, ranked 13th in the nation, taking on Lake Zurich. Glad to have you with us here on the IHSA Television Network. I'm Dave Bernhardt, joined by Jack McInerney. And Jack, we've had some great players here in the state finals, but here as the lights come on, the stars are coming out. First of all, for Wheaton Warrenville South, Riley O'Toole. For Lake Zurich, Jacob Brindley. Well, interestingly enough, Ryan, Ryan O'Toole is going to be playing here. He's already played here last year. He'll be more comfortable with this field, and probably Ron Zook. He's a recruit here for next year. On the other hand, Brindley is their top player for Lake Zurich. He's been a starter for three years. Outstanding. He does it all for them. Those are really the two stars to focus in on but as we get going watch out for those defenses but keep an eye on the number fives on both side we are ready to get started that kickoff just moments away your 7a title game on the ihsa tv network welcome back to memorial stadium let's check in on the field with our sideline reporters aaron bennett and sophia minnert Hey guys, Wheaton Warrenville South head coach Ron Muhich has lost a couple of his best receivers to injuries the last couple of weeks. He says the key tonight is how his younger, inexperienced receivers step up tonight in their first big game. He says, I'm not worried about Riley O'Toole. He'll be fine. We got to make sure he's got guys he can throw the ball to. For more on Lake Zurich, let's toss things over to Sophia Minnert. Guys, Lake Zurich head coach Brian Stort says offensively, we're going to go to Brimley. We're going to use the play action pass to open it up, get him some inside runs, and get some different looks for him so he can get things going early. Defensively, he said we have to follow our assignments, be true to our assignments, and he said just fly to the ball. He said yes, everybody says we're underdogs in this game, but we wouldn't be here if we didn't think we could win this thing. Dave and Jack, let's get this thing started. Up to you. You bet. 13 games in the season brings you right here, right now, your 7A IHSA football championships brought to you by Country Financial. Wayne Warrenville South will kick it off. Ron Muich making his fourth appearance in his title game the last five years. He already has two state champions. Will Brindley come up and get it? No, it'll be an up man. With a little bit of room to go. On the return for Lake Zurich is Tim Sayer and the Lake Zurich Bears, 13, 12 and one in the season, ranked seventh in the last regular season poll. They were champs in 2007, a 73 win over Wheaton Warrenville South. In 2006, they lost in this championship game, 35-21 to St. Reed on the Lake Zurich side. You get a good look at Brian Stortz in his fifth year, a record of 52 and 12 and a state championship. And flags come out on our first play from scrimmage. This kind of an offense is tough for the officials because they start out so quickly. Oftentimes, they, it's out of the corner of your eye that you might catch movement. And of course, then adjustment has to be made by the uh, Wheaton South Tigers. Football encroachment on the defense. That sudden Still snap is exactly what happened. You're pulled off a defensive player. Had a good look at our referee and crew chief, Ted Lepucky. The linesman is David Butts in this 7 8 game. John Long's the umpire. Thomas Pence, the line judge, and your back judge, Thomas Zillick. Motion from Brindley, and he'll get the early pitch. The Tigers will swarm him down after a gain of two. This is a defense for Wheaton Warrenville South. As much as their offense has been touted, the defense has been spectacular, only giving up 7.7 .7 points per game, the highest point total the Tigers have allowed, 20 points in the quarterfinals against Glenbard West. And that was the team that they played in double overtime to win the state championship last year right down here in Champaign. It was one of the great games that have been played on this turf. The quick pitch to Brindley. And he will be short again. 11 white jerseys surrounding Jacob Brindley. 
And that's exactly the kind of defense that Ron Muhich wants to see in this first drive. He wants them, you can see right there how quickly they get off the ball and flow to it. His main thing that he stresses for his defensive players is he's looking for quick athletic players to play on defense, and he certainly has that with this team. You saw number 57 in there. That's Will Davis, 6'3", senior. Davis suffered badly bruised ribs in his semifinal game this past week against Belleville East. It was a question mark early in the week whether he'd be able to suit up and play in this game. Third and short. You need about a yard and a half. To Brindley in a hurry. And it will depend on the spot. Looks like a good spot. Not by much. Well, you can see early, you get the hands into Brindley as quickly as possible. Those are as quick of pitches as you're going to see. Well, he is one of the quicker running backs that I have seen in the last couple of years. Lake Zurich is kind of a, a hidden gem up north in the Chicago suburbs. They have had a great program over the years, and of course, you know, that last year they, they uh, won the state championship a couple of years ago against Wheaton South, but they have been outstanding in the last five to six years. On the carry is John Millars, but a flag comes out from our referee, Ted Lepucky. And it's a motion call going against Lake Zurich. They'll have to play with first and 15. In the last five years, just for example, Brian Stortz, who's the head coach, has been at Lake Zurich for five years. His record is on an average of 10 wins a year, which is incredible. And how about four of the five years? On the offense. Four of the five years for Lake Zurich. In Brian Stortz's tenure, they've been playing in the title game. It's amazing. That's the kind of coaching that goes on at the high school level. Let's give our applaud to Ron Muhich. He's been at the Wheaton South for nine years, and he's averaged 10 wins a year. That's just incredible statistics for a coaching staff and a program. Quarterback is Zach Till for Wheaton for Lake Zurich. And he'll get along the left side to Mike Shield. Shield, not much running room there. That was just a... a Scenario where the offensive lineman could not sustain his block. It got the running back. It took him a little longer to get to the point of attack, and by that time, the defender was able to slide off the the block and make the play. Nice job defensively. You know, I mentioned Zach Till, a 5'11 junior quarterback. His name kind of gets lost in the shuffle with the star power of Jacob Brindley, but he really does make this offense go. Well, in the last several games in the playoffs, he made key, crucial plays on third down when they really needed to get a, a first down. He made the play. They get it out quickly to John Orlando. And you see the speed right there of that Wheaton South defense. In fact, you will see it all night long. Defense and defense, it's quick on quick. Well, if, if you looked on that, usually it was coaches, they like to look at the tape afterwards. How many players are within four yards of the ball? They have nine players, defensive players right now on that football. Nine players within three yards. And the other two are kind of gawking as they're moving up on it. But that's the kind of defense that wins championships. Number 49, Mike. Monte Rubio, 5'11 senior linebacker, was the one that turned it in after Orlando's catch. Now third and 11. And another flag, our third flag here, and it's an illegal procedure call against Lake Zurich. So some early jitters here as Brian Stortz's team uh, a little bit shaken. Now see, look at look at his Good demeanor. That, that is a calming demeanor. He just walked out. Five yard told penalty. kids, kind of calm down, down. Just take your time, and we'll get the, we'll get in the rhythm. Now, for a long time during the season, this is only the second game he's been on the sideline. He has been up in the press box throughout the season, and he he mentioned to me that he thought they might have lost a ball game because he was up in the press box and able to, not able to make a decision on the sideline. So, the last several games he's been back down on the sideline. Till on the move, oh. and it's picked off. Interception on the play by Casey Armbrust. Senior cornerback will give Wheat Warrenville South possession in Lake Zurich territory. Well, turnovers are always a nemesis to anybody, but when it comes to a state championship game in your first drive with a team like Wheaton South to give them, give them field position at the 45 yard line is not something you want to do in the state championship game. Let's see if they take advantage of it. They've done it all year long on turnovers, been able to take advantage of those. Riley O'Toole is the quarterback for Wheaton Warrenville South. His running back is Matt Rogers. And he will throw on first down. Wants to go big. Deep downfield. Touchdown. What a throw. 
Titus Davis on the receiving end of that touchdown pass of 44 yards. It is the 41st touchdown of the year for Wheaton Warrenville South Riley O'Toole, and it's an early 6 0 lead. Well, that's a Ron Muhich kind of a philosophy. He gets a turnover early in the state championship game. He wants to go over the top while they're a little down emotionally after a turnover, and he goes right up over the top. Great play fake right here. And he just waits for him to open up and clear the safety. Good route. What a throw. And now for the extra point. The Tigers striking quickly. They lead seven to nothing. One play in. And that man right there likes what he sees. He has seen an outstanding performance from number 81 all season long, Titus Davis. Davis a surprise in terms of this season. He was a track star. He comes in and just explodes on the receiving end. When you've got a player like Riley O'Toole that can get you the ball, you can make some things happen. Well, I thought that Riley O'Toole showed great poise because that's a deep throw. So his feet, you could see him shuffle up into the pocket till he broke underneath the safety and put the ball right on the money. That's a nice target to go to at 6'2", 175 pounds, Titus Davis. He was looking for somebody to give a big hug to after that touchdown pass of 44 yards that is the 17th touchdown reception for Davis this season. Well the other thing that you can tell that he's a big play guy is his average he has 52 catches for 1100 yards but the key to that is he averages 21 yards a catch and that's an incredible statistic for a high school receiver. 44 on that one. And just like that Wheaton Warrenville South gets things started nothing new. Look at that first quarter margin 153 to 26. That's what the Tigers outscore their opponents in the first quarter. Well you talk about a, a plan Titus Davis knew that the first play of this game was coming to him and he made the most of it. It'll be interesting to see how Lake Zurich responds. From the 20 yard line Brindley will get a chance. Lake Zurich to start it about their own 33 yard line. Penalties disrupted the last possession. Now they find themselves down by seven. 13 yard return for Jacob Brindley. The win tonight again somewhat out of the south southwest that would be at the back somewhat at the back of Lake Zurich. The Bears at 12 and one on the season. Their only loss this year came to Stevenson the top seeded team in 8A that was just by a point 24 23 and you see how quick that man hits a hole brought down by Caleb Bednars after a gain of 15 yards well the other part of that is that is how their offense is how it responds and a lot of that has to do with the composure of the head coach you saw how he just settled him down and right there just a nice trap up inside and Brenly is just quick as a cat takes advantage of that. Till in trouble and he's going to go down. Jack Lipinski 6 3 junior right there. That was a big play. He, Lipinski had the quarterback the whole time on that and he actually got so deep that he was beyond the ball carrier so he ended up actually taking himself into a sack by overrunning the ball carrier. So again here on the second possession Lake Zurich having a battle now a second down and long for a loss of seven. Screen. Tough catch needs a block gets one. Uh, we got a, We got a clip but an illegal block. Flags come out one more time. It would be a loss on the play as it is. And again even here early you see the different play calls that Brian Stortz has had and yet Wheaton South has just chased down everything here in the first five minutes. Well the critical factor is Ron Muhich right the bear there. On the offense. That penalty is refused. Third down. Ron Muhich looks for speed in the defense and he knows people have to get to the ball in the league that they play in the DuPage Valley. That is the, one of the toughest leagues in the state if not the toughest. And uh, so week in and week out it's basically a playoff game for them. So the competition is nothing different than being in the state championship game. That's a cut caliber of, of 
teams in that league. And yet to show the dominance of Wheaton Warrenville South, they have outscored their opponents by 35 points per game. Another passing situation for the Bears. They'll stay in the ground. Brindley, can he get to the outside? Ooh, and he is an ankle tackle away at midfield of getting himself a first down. He is really special. He's just fun to watch. We're going to have a fun time in this game watching him. He's just so quick. And he moves and cuts so well on the move without having to come to a stop. Just watch his feet. He's just so darn quick. But again, he's going against a defense that pursues very well. So on some of those cutbacks, he might turn, be turning right back in and pursuing players. It was Bednarz that got that tackle. Spread formation. Till also will punt possibly from this situation. He does. Wheat Warrenville South, nobody back. Good call, Coach Brown. And this ball will work out very nicely for Lake Zurich. It will come down dead at the 10 yard line. 40 yard kick for Zach Till. But his team will look up for the scoreboard and find Wheaton Warrenville South on top, 7 0. You're listening to the IHSA Football Championships here in 2010, brought to you by Country Financial. White clad folks. There's a lot of white here tonight. Lake Zurich there. Student section dressed in white. You've got Wheaton Warrenville South. They've got some white on as well. Big crowd here for this 7A game. Tigers to start from their own 10. Little option. O'Toole will get five. Would be to loosen up the defense a little bit. Riley O'Toole will run a little bit. Well, at 6'3, 210 pounds, that's quite a load for a quarterback. When he runs that option, he can take on defensive backs by lowering that shoulder. He's got good speed for a big man. He's had 390 yards in rushing and average three, just a little over uh, three and a half yards of carry. He has had some spectacular playoff numbers. He's completed 77% of his passes and 11 touchdowns coming into this game, and he connected with Davis for a 44 yard score in the first toss. And again, everybody a little bit jumpy here early. I think that's on the offense. Well, the tight end jumped. Jason Schumann. Don't want to have your name mentioned on TV as an offside, but sometimes we have to do that. Number 99, just a little anxious to make the back block. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Repeat second down. Jason Schumann, 6'7", 225 pounds senior. He had a big game last year on this field. He had four receptions and a touchdown in that double overtime win over Glenbard West for the 2009 state championship. There's a lot of tools out there for Riley O'Toole to go to. As we heard from Sabia Minard, they are down one major one. Travis Kern, a broken collarbone last week. He was part of the three headed monster of Davis, Schumann, and Kern. O'Toole on the move. There's a the coverage and it's nearly picked off. A diving attempt there late on the deflection by Grant Susi. It's such an advantage to have an athletic quarterback and and of course, to have one the size of Riley O'Toole at 6'3", 210 pounds, but to roll him out, put him on the perimeter, it puts more pressure on the linebackers and the cornerbacks because they don't know whether to come up and stop him running or to stay back in pass coverage. So that's a lot of pressure when you have an outstanding athletic quarterback. Nice job by Lake Zurich's defense on that. Third down and 10 now. Motion from Davis. A screen, screen left side. Good pursuit. Bubble screen back up there. And a nice pursuit by the defensive line and linebackers. Lake Zurich needed that stop because now they're going to get the ball in good field position. But psychologically, more than just the field position, it's important for Lake Zurich to be able to stop them like that. You can see it right here, just a bubble screen. But look at the pursuit coming. Had nowhere to go. Ryan Crow, one of the players that looked to step in for Travis Kern with that reception. And O'Toole will do the punting. Brian Welker, the star kicker, injured early in the season, created havoc in the kicking game. And now O'Toole shows he can do with this leg. What a catch there by Brindley. What a kick. That is a 42 yard punt against the wind with elevation. Not bad for your backup punter. Ron Muich checks it out. He'll send his defense onto the field with a 7 0 lead. Dave Bernhardt and Jack McInerney with you. We are just past the midway point of the first quarter. A 7-0 lead for Wheaton Warrenville South. 13th ranked team in the country. According to USA Today, but Lake Zurich now will 
Sent it up the middle, Jacob Brindley for a big gain. We go back to that defensive stand, aided by a penalty, but go back to that defensive stand, how important that was for Lake Zurich. Well, there was several importance to it. The fact that, first of all, they had that turnover in their very first possession, and then the first play, Wheaton South throws a touchdown pass, so psychologically, they're down. Then all of a sudden, they stop them, which is a big plus for their defense, and then they get a good field position, so that's very important for them to get back in the ball game, not only physically, but mentally. And two plays later, you're in, not only in Wayne Warrenville South Territory, you have a first down. This is so much more important to high school kids, I mean, emotionally, than it is, you know, for the next level on Sundays or even on Saturdays for college kids, because they're used to that. We're talking about kids emotionally, 17-year-old kids, that those kind of things can have an effect. And so, you know, the coach and the mannerisms that how he conducts himself and the way they handle it adds to their comeback, which they're getting right now. Play action attempt. Wow, good defense. Till will be chased down. It, he had an opening. You get a look at number 56 for Wheaton Warrenville South on a pursuit that time. That's Patrick Wiederhagen. He really closed that down. And from up here, there was a big gap that he looked like he was going to have at least a first down and several yards more. And it turns out he's lucky he got back to the line of scrimmage. Just a good job of pursuit here. Actually, it's a secondary that. The coverage is what forced him to scramble here and just a good job of getting to the football. Tackle goes to Casey Armbrust. They like that play up the middle of Brindley and why not? Oh, first down. To the 30 yard line. 13 yards for Jacob Brindley. He already has 57 on the ground tonight. We still have two and a half to play here in the first quarter. He's got good power for a, for a back that's only 170 pounds. But part of that is the fact he's got good forward lean when he's carrying the football, and he generates good speed. I mean, he gets downhill very quickly. Does he get quick. to the outside? He is To the quick. 20, to the 10. First and goal, Lake Zurich at the four-yard line. 26 on that carry by Brindley. Mark Herman, Gus Kuhn, Steve Garcia, Mike Hemmett, Mike Palumbo doing the job up front for the Bears. Now that's the same exact play that he had run before for that long first down. Now he busts up the middle and then breaks it outside because the safety closed in up the middle and he broke it back outside. Great quickness on his part. He's been a starter for three years and he is one heck of a running back. He is the school's all-time leading rusher. He'll get the carry here. Just short. He's got over 1,400 yards on the season and 14 touchdowns. And you can tell about his speed when you talk about what's the longest run he has. And the longest run he has for a touchdown is 86 yards. So that tells you he's got some quickness. And obviously, we've seen it thus far. One yard away. A possible tying score if you toss in an extra point. Now they're trying to spread him out. You can see that wide receiver is two yards from the sideline. Till himself powers his way in. Leg strength, did he get there? Touchdown. Now part of that on the one yard line, oftentimes people would say, well, why would you take those wide receivers and stretch them so far out? The reason being that even if it's man coverage, those linebackers sometimes have to slide out a little bit more because they're concerned about the quick slam. So they would be the underneath coverage to stop that. And when that happens, that when that quarterback sneak goes up the middle because it's what we call the soft belly of the defense. Good job right there by Zach Till. Good surge by the offensive line. Mike Palumbo, Mike Hem, Steve Garcia, the center, Gus Kuhn, the right guard, Mark Herman, the right tackle. Mike Lima for the tie. Yes, oh, not pretty. Uh, it counts. It's 7 7. That might have almost skipped over the bar. The junior quarterback, Zach Till, with the touchdown run, a one yard run. With one and a half to play here in the first quarter. And for Till, his seventh touchdown of the season. Nice rebound for, for Lake Zurich after that real rough, rocky start, getting their first possession picked, and then in the very first play, Wheaton South scoring and that long touchdown pass, and all of a sudden they show their composure to come right back down the field and score. Six of those seven plays, 53 of the 54 yards by Jacob Ridley. Well, it's kind of interesting to give our fans at home a kind of an idea about Lake Zurich. They have played two consecutive teams in the playoff that had two contrasting type of offenses. The last game they played against St. Rita, 
the Mustangs from the Catholic League and they're a powerhouse and they have a strong running game their offensive line averaged about 260 pounds they shut them down the week before they played a Simeon team that had tremendous team speed great athletes and defensively they were able to shut them down so they had two composites of great speed teams and a power team and yet their defense was able to make those adjustments that kind of tells you the job that they've done at Lincoln at the uh, at Lake Zurich as far as their coaching staff is concerned but how the kids can adjust when you look at those two games the eight quarters combined they held Simeon and St. Rita scoreless in seven of those eight quarters well they got their hands full now because they have a team that can do both run and throw with Wheaton South high hop on the kickoff on the return Trevor Sebert that's a return of seven. So that the early jitters, the early bomb to Davis, the jitters gone, exactly what Lake Zurich needed. Exactly. Good shot of Coach Stortz there. Keeps his composure, gets the kids under control, telling them to calm down. And, and kids react to your mannerisms on the sideline. If he had gotten all rattled in that first series, you know, they kind of would have seen that. But he showed great maturity and, and uh, poise, and the kids fed off of that. You know, both these teams have been here so often they do have that level of calmness that radiates from their head coach. Well they're not intimidated by the stadium surroundings. You know they know it's a big game obviously but they've played in big games before and they've both been down here for state championship games so they're not all that intimidated. You know and the other part of that is you say well these players that are on the field right now they've not played in all of these title games in the last five years but they've been sitting in the stands. They've been part of the program as freshmen, just in round and the confidence that the seniors have given them. Exactly, and, and or siblings having been on the teams, those kind of things, and they're community programs, so they go to a lot of those games and they follow them. And, and these are the idols for the younger kids, the high school teams. Play action quickly to the play. left side. Oh my goodness, what a great job on that left side of the offense by Danny Mano. He's a linebacker number 21 or he's a defensive back depending on what he wants to call himself because in this defense a lot of parts are, are interchangeable. What an outstanding watch him right here it's a bubble screen he just fights off fights off the blocker and just does a tremendous job there that is just one heck of a football play right there. Lucas Divick was out there trying to work on Minogue. Well, that's a highlight film seriously to teach a kid how to play the bubble screen what a great job. Third and a little over 10 to go. Bootleg pass. Puts it on the money to Davis. First down in midfield. Again, the advantage of having an athletic quarterback that can get out on the perimeter. 16 yards on that completion to Davis. That ends our first quarter. It was the pass from O'Toole to Davis for our opening score. It's right where we thought we'd be. 7A game. 7-7. They're rocking and rolling here at Memorial Stadium as we start the second quarter. With Jack McInerney, I'm Dave Bernhard. This is the 7A championship game. And another flag comes out to slow this one up before we can get it started. Well, Riley O'Toole threw for a career high 380 yards last week in the semifinal win. The coach that he victimized, Tim Prunk from Belleville East, very perceptive comment. He said it's almost like everything is in slow motion ball, for O'Toole. start. On the offense. He makes good decisions. The receivers are always where they're supposed to be, and I think that really played out that last pass completion to Titus Davis. Well, no doubt about it. He had the composure to get out on the perimeter and wait for him to get open, but that's part of the package of why he's going to the University of Illinois. I mean, they obviously think very highly of all of the traits that he possesses. When we look at those numbers there, and you can look at yardage. Time of possession is something that Lake Zurich needed here tonight. That's one of the reasons we're tied at seven as the Carry that tie goes to Matt Rogers, another one of the unsung heroes for Wheaton Warren. Well, that's South. what also helps Riley O'Toole be so successful is the fact that he's got a running back back there in in Matt Rogers, and you'll see him right here. He's got the threat to go all the way. He averages about six yards a carry, had 1,100 yards on the season on 184 carries. He's 185 pounds, but they have a thousand yard rusher in the backfield with a quarterback that throws for 3,000 yards. That's a nice balance of offense, so it makes it very difficult for the uh, the teams that are playing defense, especially for linebackers. You know, you take a look at the total yardage numbers for the whole season. Of the total yards, 60% of those yards have come by way of pass, 40% by way of run. 
yet everybody hears everything, and they're going to hear more about him, Riley O'Toole, here on this field. Well, up north, most people think that Wheaton South just throws the ball all over the ballpark, and they don't. I mean, they obviously at 60-40, that's a heck of a ratio, especially when you're 13 and 0. Now our referee Ted Lapucky coming here to the near sideline. That's the Wheaton Warrenville South sideline, and only one second left the clock. It was 11:58 at that penalty, and then the run by Rogers only took one second off. So please we'll see reset the clock to 11:40. So they'll bring it down for another 17 seconds. And it's a sluggish start here to the second quarter. Good shot there of Ron Muhich. Got an out, has an outstanding coaching staff around him. Does a great job of coaching his coaches, who then in turn coach those players. Send a big tight end, Schumann in motion. O'Toole, great defense. Knocking the pass away was Jack Lynn. Lynn. 6'3", 205 pound junior, and actually he was a key in the win over St. Rita. Not necessarily on the field, it was Lynn, after Glenbard West had eliminated Lake Zurich last year in a really tough loss in the semifinals to deny Lake Zurich a trip here. Lynn saved the newspaper article from that game. He pulled it out before the semifinal game against St. Rita and says, I've waited 365 days to make up for that semifinal loss and Lake Zurich goes out and defeats St. Rita 21 to nothing. O'Toole with room to run. Good job defensively. Another great job of coverage there. And he's forcing him to go out there. Now, you know, he ends up with a three yard, three yard gain. But that was basically just outstanding coverage by Lake Zurich. Their defensive backs are doing a great job. And then when he did cross that line of scrimmage, they swarmed to him to deny him an extra five yards, and it will be another punt, this time with the win. Well, their best linebacker that the Lake Zurich has is J.J. Raffleson, and he came up there and pancaked the running back trying to get at O'Toole, and that put the pressure on him. Look at that punt. This will work out pretty nicely for Wheat Warrenville South as inside the 20-yard line is where Brindley will take it. A kick of 30 yards, very effective for O'Toole, and now Lake Zurich. The ball, first time that they have had the ball. This score tied, a chance to move it down the field once again. Well, oftentimes people say, well, it was only 30 yards, but the thing was, it was in the air for so long, it allowed it outstanding coverage by Lake Zurich to get down there and not allow him to make a big run back. A little bit different field position here this time for Lake Zurich, starting at their own 19. Brindley, a juke in. To the outside, close to a first down. He has such great speed getting the outside, such quickness. They like to get him on an island. What we mean by that is him just one on one with the cornerback, nobody blocking. Watch the job right here. The tackle pulls out in front of him, but now he's on it right there. He's up against the cornerback one on one. He gives him a little move and he picks up eight yards. That's the kind of thing that they want. They want to get him on one on one with the defensive back and let him be an athlete. Right, Mike Shelton, number 30, really. Knew that he was on an island out there and had to do something with Brindley. Close good. enough to measure on the far side of the field. Good job by the officials here, because that was close. But Brindley is just fun to watch. I've watched him for three years now, and he has obviously gotten better and better. Now, he might be, you know, an inch or two too short and maybe 10 pounds too light to be a what some people might say a big time player, but I don't agree with that. I think he is just one outstanding football player and a heck of a running back, and he's going to be a, a one great recruit for somebody. He's showing it here early already, carrying the ball 11 times for 95 yards. And again, his longest run this year is 88 yards for a touchdown, so he has that speed. But what what's amazing about him is his quickness. He doesn't stop. He doesn't slow down. Every move he makes is on the run, going downfield, picking up yardage. Let's see what Brian Storch wants to bring out of the playbook here on second and very short. The secondary is right up in the face. It's like almost like a ten-man front. Safe play as Brindley powers forward for yet another first down. He ran right into Brandon Peterson. Coming right at you here, just a little trap right up the middle. 
And he runs so hard and so lowers that shoulder and picks up that three yards for a first down. You, know, you can say he doesn't have much size, but he just ran over a 200 pounder. Nice trap block there by Gus Kuhn, right guard. Ooh, quick hitter up the middle of the fullback, Millars. Lars is another one that's come on the last several weeks to help him. He was out with an injury throughout the year, but he came back in the playoffs and has been a big plus for him. The big thing about him is he's a real good short yardage runner, but he's an outstanding blocker. He survived that injury this year to be a major contributor. Last year, he missed about half the season with the sprained Achilles tendon. He's playing on the big stage here tonight. Coach Stortz there is looking at his play sheet, but he's not looking at this play. He's looking at the next play after this. He's always one play ahead. Ridley will be about a yard short of a first down. Friendly is the workout workhorse, and of course, when you carry the ball as often as he does, you have to be in tremendous physical condition. We'll see some Brindley on defense as well. Third down in a yard. About two minutes in to the second quarter, the 7A championship. Now these kind of plays are really, it's not so much the running back as it's the offensive line that gets the first down for you. There's another. Good. Caleb Bednar is with the tackle, but that was two yards past the line of scrimmage. And if you watch the offensive line, starting with the right guard, Gus Kuhn, the center, Steve Garcia, left guard, Mike Hem. And the left tackle Mike Palumbo they're the ones that made that surge downfield and he just follows right in behind him you can see right there they're locked up on people that's how you pick up those short yardages the 39 RJ Hochelle also went on the stop look at that hole right there good surge double team on the nose by the center and the guard Pitch the outside Ooh. a step away and one man to beat Great open field tackle by Bednars, but Brindley will bust it to the 26 yard line, a gain of 28. They just bang, bang, bang away at you. Now that's just another look running the option with Zach Till getting out on the perimeter to try and get the ball. They want Brimley to get the ball on the perimeter. You can see by pitching it right here, he is now already out on the perimeter. Nice job of blocking by Jack Lynn, the wide receiver number 14 that sprung him on that play. This drive started inside the 20. And yet another hole and another tackle by Bednars, but not until Brindley gets another 10. It's amazing the conditioning. He he's not even breathing heavy. I'm, I'm breathing heavier up here. I'm so excited watching him. You know, I hope it translates on the big screen as it does here in the stadium as to how quick the feet of Jacob Brindley are. This is against a defense that can fly. Well, you know what you stop a, a good defense, you usually run right at them. That's the first time they've stopped them tonight. But when you have a real fast defense, the key to stopping that is and to reduce their movement is to run right at them. Number 57, that was Will Davis once again. The Illinois High School Football Association's all stater. Good penetration. What he did is it just came right down inside. He had a slant on. Now they run things up front, a defensive scheme for Wheaton South where they get in gaps, they'll jump in gaps, or they'll slant in one direction or another. And they move their players around depending on the defensive front. I think they're going to their money man here. 143 of the 146 yards. He'll get it again. Inside the 15. Now you've got an interesting third down call coming here. Now he still has he's got two downs to pick this up. But again clock control. Just controlling that clock keeping O'Toole off the field. And that's a factor as to their offensive philosophy and actually their whole game plan. Run the ball control the clock keep that potent offense off the field. Bears need seven for a first down. Option again. Looking for a block that way. And Brindley will take it all the way into the stands as he stays alive. He had Jack Lynn out there trying to block, but it was the 
quickness from that Tiger defense that ran him out of bounds, and he will be four yards short of the first down. Well, that's where the payoff is on quickness right there. They try to get out on the perimeter, but Wheaton South is so quick. And Ron Muhich, again, as we mentioned earlier, likes to play quick defensive linemen. He's got a lot of wrestlers out there. You can see him fighting off the blocks. Everybody is trying to turn him back inside. They're not letting him get on the edge. So they're fighting to stay on the outside shoulder of that offensive blocker to turn it into the help. And that's what they did on that play. All right now, Lake Zurich says we're going to try a field goal. They go to Mike Leva. I think they're going to call a timeout. Mike Leva from 27 yards. It is a wobbler, and oh, it's good. It hit, it hit the upright. <laughs> <laughs> well, Leva has not been pretty on his extra point. The field goal may have been uglier, but he has four of the 10 points for Lake Zurich, and the Bears take a 10-7 lead. Well, that's crucial to make that decision down there, but the other part of it is, look at him. He's, he's hoping he made the right decision as far as going for this field goal. Because he knows how how the extra point went. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Look at the expressions on his face. <laughs> oh yeah. That is I know it all the time. Priceless. I know it all the time. Great job. Great camera work. Yeah, great job. Oh man. But you know that, that's a tough decision. You got a, a running back that has driven you all the way down the field. And your, your psychological think we've got to get a score out of this. Do we want to make an attempt to go for seven? We'll still have him down in a hole. But he decided to go for three and barely got that three. But he still got it. And that's a credit to his defense. He's telling his defense, you know, if I can get us three and get us the lead, I trust that you'll take care of business. Right. And what was interesting, prior to that field goal, he called that timeout and he went out in the field and he was gesturing to the team that it was his fault that he made the, the, the gesture that you know it was his fault that he waited too long to call that because they were running out of time and they would have lost five more yards and would have been a longer field goal and I thought that was a, a, an interesting perspective for a coach to come out and tell the kids it was his fault for that timeout and the kids believe in him obviously do not want to kick it deep and Rogers will take it out to the 42 yard line. 15 yards on the return. Wheaton Warrenville South, good field position. 58 yards passing for O'Toole. 44 of those coming on the first play from scrimmage for the Tigers tonight. That was a touchdown pass to Titus Davis. There's a confident, if not poised, Ron Muhich on the sideline. He's been in tough games his entire 10 year uh, head coaching. So he knows it's a long, long game. They are the defending 7-8 champions. They are the only team in Illinois to win state titles in four different classes. O'Toole to Lake Zurich territory, enough for the first down. Now that was just a counter tray for the quarterback. Now you have to have a good athlete to do this, the right guard and right tackle. They faked in one direction, and the right guard and the right tackle. Take a look, watch the right guard right there and the right tackle leading them around. 58, Luke Lowerson, and the right guard, John Mulvey, Number 76 lead him around. Oftentimes it's a running back carrying the ball behind that garden tackle. But in this case it's big 6'3", 210 pound Riley O'Toole. Luke Lewerson headed to the University of Kansas to play his collegiate football. Good offensive line. Well coached. First down pass. For oh, Schumann they picked. picked off. From the 25 yard line. It's Zach Till. O'Toole, the quarterback, to his counterpart, Zach Till, the interception and a 12 yard return for Riley O'Toole, only his third interception of the year. And to have your quarterback, who's only a junior, being one of your two way players, and they only play two players both ways, Lake Zurich does. Good fake carry, looks them off and comes back. Nice job of jumping on a ball, a little overthrown. But I think part of that was because the linebackers made a nice drop and he had to get it over the top of them. O'Toole with only his sixth career interception. Three of those six have come in the last two title games. He threw two last year. Reverse. John Orlando took it from the right side to the left side knowing netted a yard. Now a play like that is designed to slow down a fast pursuing defense and in that case they're so fast it didn't work they flowed one way we can see it right here 
Gives it back here on the pitch but you can see how quick they are and fight outside to turn it in. Just great reactions by the defense of Wheaton Warrenville South. Number 44 Brandon Peterson one of those Tigers to clog that up. And they stay right on till as the handoff was faked to Brindley up the middle he was also covered. Boy, that is assignment football right there on the defensive side. Well, those are the two biggest stops thus far that Wheaton South has been able to make in the last couple of possessions by Lake Zurich. And there'll be a lot of adjustments going on at halftime for both of these teams. I mean, both these teams are obviously so well coached, as we can see, that there will be adjustments to schemes and things in the second half. Right now, Lake Zurich is spreading the field. They need eight yards for a first down. Till under pressure. He's got a man wide open. Oh! And that one is broken up, and he was sitting there open for a long time. Orlando at the 40 yard line. Just the movement of that froze the secondary and the linebackers. You can see 39 stepping up. He's supposed to drop underneath, but now by having some movement by the quarterback, he's wide open. Just a late delivery of the football. Not the biggest of defenses. But you'd like to get in a foot race with Wheaton South's defense and Lake Zurich's defense because it would be a battle. Great, great team speed. And now the punt away by Ed Zarkowitz. Titus Davis can't squirt free and ankle tackle, and it will be Wheaton South's turn with 4-12 to play in the first half. The Tigers looking for their second state title in a row. Trail Lake Zurich by three. Told you they'd bring them out when they're young. Those are future Tigers right there. Good and reaction. Tool only will get a couple on first down. Again, taking away the 44 yard touchdown pass in the very first play from scrimmage. Less than 40 yards of offense here for Wheaton Warrenville South in the first half. Well Lake Zurich's defense has been underrated all year long and I think that's more to people watching scores as far as you know how many points you put on the board and when you see teams in person against different kind of offenses it's amazing to see how well they adjust. And we have whistles on the field with 329 to play in a half time of possession a lot of times that doesn't mean time a whole out. lot timeout is called by Wheaton's Warrenville South. Sometimes time of possession is somewhat misleading, but I think it tells a story here tonight. Lake Zurich, 15 minutes, nine seconds to 439 for the Tigers. And that's a game plan. That's a game plan all the way. And in that first drive, who knows how long Lake Zurich might have had it if that first possession hadn't been picked off. And Wheaton South takes one play to score a touchdown. So, you know, those statistics could be somewhat askew. They could even be higher. For Lake Zurich. And it really, I mean, neither team has been totally dominant here. It's just been a ball controlled by Lake Zurich thus far. It's a confident sideline right there, the Lake Zurich sideline. And you made the comment uh, very early, it was about the second penalty of the game that Brian Stortz just came out on the field very calm and just relaxed and got his team settled down. And you can see the composure right there. Nice adjustment just made on that. Tight end is open again. O'Toole again overshoots Schumann just a little bit. They're going to the big 6'7 senior, the pass breakup, or at least the closest man to the ball, number 23, Grant Susi, a sophomore. Well, here's right out from under center taking the snap, and he's just trying to get him on a post route, and he just overthrows a big 6'7 target. But Lake Zurich secondary has been doing a real nice job. Jack Lynn uh, has been doing a nice job, and, and uh, they're stayed the linebackers are helping them out because they're forcing those wide receivers to get deeper in the routes because the linebackers are dropping so deep that they have to get in behind them and that forces a deeper throw. Those adjustments will be made at halftime I would assume. Looking for nine yards. O'Toole under pressure. And he just had to absolutely throw that away. William Hussey chasing him down. And you talk about a defensive lineman with Let's say less than huge size. How about Hussey? 5'11, 
5 8 175 pounds junior. And those are the kind of kids though I mean he's not intimidated by the size all he's got to do is make an open field tackle it's not like he's going against the wishbone you can see the pressure he puts on him right there. Nice job and, and well coached because he forced him to be going away from the line of scrimmage. He did not allow him to turn his shoulders downfield which allow him then to run or throw deeper. They had him off balance by the way he pressured him. Another fair catch called at the 22 yard line O'Toole with the 37 yard punt. 315 left here in the first half. Well defensive ends are always coached to make sure that when you're coming up field against a quarterback that's on the run whether it be a bootleg or a sprint out don't allow him to turn his throwing shoulder downhill especially for a right handed quarterback because when he does that he gets better leverage and then can also run now right handed quarterback going to the left the key to him is don't let him get his shoulders at all around keep him going away from the line of scrimmage then he's got to throw back across his body so those are little coaching points that you work on with a defensive end as far as rush contained. They started to Brindley a nice little cut will net him about five yards. That was just a terrific cut right there right at the last second that should have been about a two yard gain. Just watch the move here that he makes right there right there. Now that's just amazing that picked up four more yards with that just that little cut and again he's got his shoulders downfield he's making his moves upfield a lot of kids want to run towards the line of scrimmage he makes his moving his moves going upfield. Out of two to one ratio and total yards advantage Lake Zurich. Brindley stiff arms Bednars sideline sprint hit hard on the sidelines. Enough for a first down to the 42 yard line a burst of 16 yards. This kid is really something special. He is really fun to watch. And time for Lake Zurich they've used a couple of timeouts or they've used one timeout they have two remaining. He just never runs out of gas doesn't look like he gets tired and they just keep running them and running them. Adam Dansdale number 48 gave him a pretty good shot right there. Look at those statistics that is absolutely incredible we have two and a half minutes left in the second quarter. He is actually approaching the 7 8 championship record for rushing yards in a game and he'll look to build on it here but he's only going to add about one to it. Chase down out there in the open field. RJ Hoshell with the tackle and he plays a middle linebacker spot so he actually goes from sideline to sideline that showed you the kind of speed he has 6 1 200 pound middle linebacker does an outstanding job for Wheaton South. He's the captain of the defense. Brindley a flag is out. We're going to get a clip, I think, or a hold on the wide receiver on the downfield block. Brindley took a pretty good hit right there at the end of that run by Brandon Peterson. We'll hear from Ted Lapucky in a moment. A holding call will go against the Bears with a minute 54 left. I hope they have a hot tub in the locker room at halftime for uh, Brindley. Because he could be listening to the coach while he's sitting in that because he has just been a workhorse and he's got to be banged up. He's been taking some hits, but he just keeps coming back. Holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second out. That's about a 30 yard difference. His run was down to about the 30 yard line. Now they're back on the 45. Great effort on his part. But again, you know those kind of things will happen those kids are downfield blocking and they just get aggressive and all of a sudden the defender makes a move because Burnley makes a cut and they reach out to continue the block and they end up with a hold. Good job by the officials after the penalty second down and eight. Brindley spins off one spins off another across midfield. It will be third down and a yard to go. Again, you see if you can tackle this man coming right at you. Just the spin moves right there, but his feet never stop. Never stop moving. It takes three people to bring him down. He's only 170 pounds. Oh, that hurts. Again, another penalty. 
That does hurt. Not only because of the yardage, they had third and one, and they had a minute and five seconds left. Now they're going to have third Red and ball six. Ball. Snap infraction on the offense. Repeat third down. Steve Garcia, the center, evidently the culprit on that one for Lake Zurich. Well, they're spreading them out, so we could be looking here to draw a screen or looking downfield with Zach Till. Option. That's how they get on the perimeter. Needs a block to come back this way. Oh, face mask. They could get all of that yardage back. Casey Armbrust, number 20. Oh, block and blow the waist. Ooh. Well, now a decision here for Wheat Warrenville South with 52 seconds left. Would be about seven yards short of the first down. If they decline the penalty, you know, it would be fourth down. Make it about eight yards to go. Let's take a look here. Block below the waist on the offense. That penalty's refused. Fourth oh, down. That was Timeout. Kind of a half hearted. I think at the last second he realized that he can't do that. Unless, and this happens sometimes, kids trying to cut back, their, their foot gets stuck in the turf. Well, and I don't know whether that was designed for Brindley to come back this way. Kind of caught Till a little bit off guard. I don't think it was. I mean, he's the type of ball player you never know. Once he gets that football, you never know what he's going to do with it. That play was designed to get him on the perimeter, but right now you can see they came up. He had nowhere to go, so you want to go. And that's Zach Till, who obviously doesn't do a lot of blocking, trying to bend down there or fall down. So this will be a situation here where Lake Zurich will punt it and hope that they get good coverage on the punt. You've got two great return men back, both playmakers and game breakers. But if you notice right now, excuse me, David, both of these return guys are in the right in the middle of the field. Now, if I'm that punter or I'm Coach Storch, I'm going to tell them punt it to the numbers. Get a good look at Ed Zarkowitz, the senior punter. Gonna go at Davis. That's why I'm up here, punting right in the middle of the field. Check that. That was Caleb Bednar as it rushed up to get it. And with 48 seconds to play, Wheat Warrenville South 68 yards away from a score. They trail it 10-7. Difference in this game. The field goal after the 34-yard punt by Zarkowitz. And with 48 seconds left and a quarterback like Riley O'Toole, anything can happen, especially when you have outstanding wide receivers. And look for Davis, number 81. Tool on the run, puts it right on the money. Good for a first down. It stops the clock. He gets it to Ryan Crow. Look for them to come back with a very similar play. And the reason I tell you that is because once he got out on the perimeter, the defensive backs had to come up to contain the run. Look how he gets his shoulders downfield. That's the key to a good quarterback. Get out on the perimeter. The run pass threat but turning downfield. Now what happened there is the DBs came up when he sprinted out and Titus Davis got deep on one of the corners. We could see the same play right here. Again he's going out. There may be a flag coming out. There it is. There'll be a penalty. It'll go against Mike Shield. He was on the coverage again. They go to the right side to Ryan Crow. Ryan Crow interesting. He was on the sidelines last year. Crow is senior. Uh, He's playing wide receiver, but he's on the sidelines last year. And after the Tigers ended up getting to this championship game after the center final win, it was Rowe that, Crow that made the comment. He says, you know, I'm getting the willies just thinking about playing in this championship game. <laughs> well, that was definitely pass interference. He had his right arm around on the ball, but he had him wrapped up from behind. A great call by the officials. But again, Riley O'Toole's not pass the kind of on the defense. Automatic first down. Riley O'Toole is not the kind of quarterback that is like a Michael Vick that's so super quick. But what he is is he's a good athlete that gets out on the perimeter and throws very well on the run. And when you get him on the perimeter, that shakes up the secondary. O'Toole buying time. He'll stop the clock with 30 seconds left. Boy, if you you have 30 seconds left in the first half, you're down by three. You're in your Opponent's territory at about the 38 yard line. Who else would you rather have handle the ball than Riley O'Toole? Well, I'm sure down the road here, uh, Illinois football fans will be seeing him doing the same thing over the next four years here at Illinois, or depending on if he's redshirted, the next five years. 
but I think they're going to start going a little more vertical now which means they're going to look for those deeper routes even with him sprinting out a little bit to put a little pressure on the corners to have them roll up and those backs try to get in behind them. Tigers with one timeout remaining here in the half. Quickly over the middle Schumann tight end first down to the 25 yard line. 12 yards on that completion. He's going to down the ball right here. Twenty three seconds left. O'Toole to the near sideline. You open up the playbook and O'Toole you, you want a big target. How about a six seven two hundred twenty five pounder. Not a bad target to go to takes three leg Zurich players to bring them down. Now they've got plenty of time with twenty three seconds here. They're on the twenty five yard line. They've got big receivers and they got a strong arm quarterback. O'Toole 50 percent completion rate tonight. He is at 75 percent on the season. He's thrown a touchdown and a pick. Looking for the go ahead score to Davis. What a catch. There it is going vertical to Davis. Touchdown to Titus Davis. The ball was right on the money but a spectacular grab for Davis. Those two have hooked up twice and it's a Wheaton Warren Bill South lead and it wasn't that bad a defensive coverage the back was right on him he just made a great concentrated catch outstanding we'll ice on him right now just watch number 81 right here just that does close the corner right there now you can see right there that was not bad coverage but it was just great hands and of course if you're six foot two and you're going over the top of a uh, five foot eleven corner that makes a difference. Brian Walker for the extra point. He will drive that one through. 17 seconds to spare. Titus Davis comes up huge. A 44 yard touchdown reception and now a 25 yarder in a 14 to 10 Wheaton South lead. What a well thrown ball. Look at the mechanics on him. Good follow through but puts the ball right up in the air where a six six foot three receiver can go up and get it. Great concentration even better hands. Great job by the offensive line here. You can see right there the tight end stays in and blocks gives a max protection. Nice catch and having the the wherewithal to make that turn and get into the end zone. It was Zach Till on the coverage and Till will look back at these films and he will just shrug his shoulders and say I, there's nothing more I could have done on that one. Well you need to give credit to that offensive line that gave him top. Uh, that was a seventh step drop which meant he needed more time and Eric Lowerson Dom Del Angeles Joe Hall John Mulvey Luke Lowerson the front five did a nice job and you throw in the tight end Jason Schumann see the protection he's getting you need that kind of time when you drop back six steps nice job but the, after the catch to stay in bounds and get in the end zone that's an athlete for you so we credit O'Toole we credit Davis let's credit our camera folks here in our production tonight. you just can't get any tighter or closer or feel it any better than that right there excellent job and with that a four point lead for the Tigers all three phases the throw the catch and the camera work <laughs> you can't top that that penalty near midfield for Lake Zurich that really hindered their drive comes back to haunt them this kickoff oh, is still a live ball it. it just got in there Brindley very wisely gets back in a hurry that ball was hanging near the goal line so with 17 seconds left Lake Zurich their 20 yard line is where they'll start. Let's listen in to what a touchdown sounds like. Oh, that is what it's like at the state finals that feeling, that roar when you're on the field. Man. I heard that when you walked into the stadium this morning <laughs> when people saw you. No, no, no. That was people running for cover. Oh. Lake Zurich will just take a knee here on their very first offensive play from scrimmage in the half. Wheaton Warrenville scout scores on a 44 yard touchdown pass. On their last snap of the half, Wheaton Warrenville South scores on a 25 yard touchdown pass. Both times from Riley O'Toole to Titus Davis, and it adds up to a 14-10 Tigers lead. O'Toole 
will walk into the locker room. Adjustments to be made on both sides. It's a beauty in Class 7A. Wheaton Warrenville South, top ranked team in the state, 14 10 over Lake Zurich. Ron Muich is the head coach for Wheaton Warrenville South. He's been in the state championship game for the last five years. He is used to halftime interviews, and he's on the field right now with our Aaron Bennett. We're down on the field with Wheaton Warrenville South head coach Ron Muhich. His team up 14 to 10 heading into the halftime. Uh, coach, you, you bookended your half there with a couple of touchdowns. Tough for the offense to really get get much of a rhythm for you guys, uh, really in the whole first half. Yeah, we've, you know, they they've possessed the ball a little bit more than uh, you know in the first quarter. I thought we had it one time, and that was about it. But uh, we've got to move the ball. They're doing a great job of defensing uh, Titus. Uh, we got to get the run game going like I told you at the beginning of the game and uh, if we can get something going with the run game uh, and keep our defense off the field uh, we'll have a chance. Coach thanks a lot. Good Thank luck you. in the second half. Wheaton Warrenville South head coach Ron Muhich his team up 14 10. We're back with more after this. Welcome back to the 2010 IHSA State Football Championships. We're at halftime of the Class 7A game. Wheaton Warrenville South with a four-point lead over Lake Zurich. Joining me now is Jane Deluche. She's the president and CEO of the Champaign County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, Jane, a lot of uh, fans here, you know, they see the football games, but there's a lot more, you know, outside here in the parking lot and out in the community for fans here to get involved in, isn't there? Absolutely. We've had thousands come through Tent City this weekend. It's been, we've had mechanical bull, we've had food, we've had, they did a spirit contest these schools know how to have a good time and support their team coming to the state championship and I know you're hoping a lot of these fans and maybe some players come back out in the spring for an event you guys uh, have coming up here in Champaign County absolutely we have the 30 annual Christie Clinic Illinois Marathon so think very warm thoughts on that we have uh, they're predicting between 14 to 18 thousand runners that are going to be here April 29th and 30th they've added a 10k this year they're they're doing a 5k on Friday night it's a great way the whole community gets involved it's a great way to be see the community either running or volunteer or just be a part of it in some way and that marathon's an event just started a couple of years ago and you've really seen this grow throughout the last couple of years a lot more participation a lot more excitement about that event too it started they predicted maybe 5,000 and it grew from 10 to 12 now they're looking at 14 to 18,000 and the idea I think behind it is that so many people think why would you want to come to central Illinois the good part is we're flat it's a great course the marathon committee has done a great job in outlining a course that showcases the university it showcases both Champaign Urbana it shows cases all of the fine amenities we have here it goes to the parks it goes to downtown so it's a really neat way to see it and they hit, really do it right in terms of the medals all the support services that go with it so it's a fantastic event and a lot of people including all of our alumni love to come here to run I know the Convention and Visitors Bureau loves it the the community loves it. a lot of business for the restaurants and the hotels and everything uh, when, when all these folks come into town that's something that, that goes into planning things like this I'm sure it does in fact at last year the estimated economic impact was about 7.8 million for that event so we predict for it to even go over 9 million this year just based on the sheer numbers so we're happy when people come stay all night we're happy when they eat in the restaurants when they shop when they buy gas all the things that they do here always helps because it's money that goes back to the community all right Jane thanks a lot for joining us we really appreciate it Thank you. Jane Deleuze she's the president and CEO of the Champaign County Convention and Visitors Bureau we're at halftime of the class 7a game Wheaton Warrenville South with a four-point lead we're back after this In 2007, it was Lake Zurich claiming the 7A title by a 7-3 score over Wheaton Warrenville South. But here at the half in 2010, it's a 14-10 lead for your defending 7A champs. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium, everybody, along with Jack McInerney. I'm Dave Earnhardt. Happy you've joined us for this one. And at home, you have to be enjoying this one as a fan. But I know as an analyst, this is truly an analyst's dream here tonight. Well, you know, the hype that, that led up to this all week long has been amazing. Everybody talking about defense and offense and the different characteristics that each team possesses. It's everything that they talked about in the entire week. It's amazing the various adjustments that both teams are making. I would love to have a camera and a microphone right now in the halftime at Lake Zurich and in the locker room over at Wheaton South just to listen to the little things that they're talking about. Not major adjustments, just little ones. These are two outstanding teams. It'll be really interesting to see the little adjustments that are being made at halftime. Let's take a look to see how we reach this score of 14-10 at the half as we take a look at our first half highlights here on the IHSA Television Network. 
First of all, it's Zach Till, not really a thrower on the season, and this one picked off by Casey Armbrust. It gives Wheaton Warrenville South the ball, their first play from scrimmage. Riley O'Toole, Titus Davis, you don't lay it in there any better than that. 44 yards and a 7-0 Wheaton Warrenville South lead. And then it was Jacob Brindley. He'll help out his quarterback, Zach Till, who was dumped that time by Lipinski. Here comes Brindley. He had a huge first half. We'll take a those, look at those stats in a second. Couldn't break free from that one. He stretches out this. And there he goes, Jacob Brindley. Gets it down close, one yard away, and that's when Till will punch it in, and we're tied at seven. Lake Zurich comes right on back, and who are you going to give it to? How about number five? Again, Brindley breaks a big gainer. Riley O'Toole, though, late after a field goal by Mike Leva. Intercepted by his counterpart, Zach Till. Till going both ways. And now with a 10-7 deficit, O'Toole looks for Davis. There he is. Great touchdown pass into the end zone by Davis from O'Toole. The second time those two connect. And here are our halftime statistics. You take a look at a couple of very interesting numbers. They're all related to each other, Jack. Rushing yards, 193 for Lake Zurich. And look at that time of possession. Well, when you talk about numbers that can be askew, there it is right there. It's amazing to look up in the scoreboard, though, and see the score. It's just amazing that they have 17 minutes of control that football and had not been for that interception in first possession that could have been even higher in that particular statistic in the rushing yards 175 or 180 of them are all from Zin uh, Brindley. So it's been a one man show thus far for Lake Zurich and O'Toole has kept in the ball game from the standpoint of getting them back early with some key passes. Only one yard in the air for Lake Zurich. They're trailing by four. Will they have to put it in the air a little bit more here in the second half? We'll find out. Stay right there. These are the 2010 IHSA State Football Championships brought to you by Country Financial. Two big days of high school football here in Champaign on the campus of the University of Illinois. We have crowned six state champions, seven and eight to go. And as we take a look at how this weekend started, it started in a big way for Lena Winslow. The underdogs in their game against Tuscola, however, was Lena Winslow. They came back in a big way. They claimed the 1A state championship. First time in their history to raise that big trophy. In class 2A, Sterling Newman, Central Catholic. A couple of big wins in the first two games. This is a 2A matchup against Moroa Forsyth. And it was all Newman Central Catholic, the 2A champs here in 2010. Then in the highly anticipated 3A game, Illini West taking on Stillman Valley, a battle of top-ranked teams. Illini West in a thriller 22-20 win over Stillman Valley and Illini West takes home their second title in the last three years denying Stillman Valley back to back championships. We wrapped up the first night of action here in Champaign the Rochester Rockets with West Lutton Colton Glazebrook. They win their first title in their first trip downstate 24 7 over Rock Island Alleman. That was day number one here in Champaign. A lot of happy folks. They have taken all day today to celebrate couple of more champions to be crowned later on tonight. And Brian Stortz hopes that he can raise that big trophy. He's the head coach of Lake Zurich. He's standing by right now. Coach we Coach Wheaton South got you there with a big play early in the first quarter there and one late in the second quarter. Other than that, uh, your defensive effort's been pretty good so far in the first half. The defense has played well, but we've given up a couple big plays, and you can't do that against an explosive team like this. And offensively, we've shot ourselves in the foot as well. And if we clean those things up, I think we'll be all right. Any particular adjustments you guys uh, need to make here as you, as you start for the third quarter? Eliminate the mistakes. Uh, just play hard. I mean, we, we, we've played well, except for a few mistakes that we've made, and we cannot do that. We've got to eliminate that. Like I said, if we do it, uh, we feel like we, we can you know, come out on top in this one. Coach, thanks. Good luck in the second half. Coach Brian Stortz, his team down by four. Guys, back to you. Thank you very much, Aaron. And you, Jack, you take a look at Brian Stortz says, you know, we, we can't give up the big plays. We gave up two big plays. But they were two plays that you just cannot throw a ball any better than O'Toole did to Davis on both occasions. Well, he's got to say something, right? <laughs> and so it's two big plays, and it's obvious they were, but they were both well covered. And it was just an excellent pass and an excellent catch. They have done what they wanted to do coming in this ballgame as far as a 
game plan. They have controlled the clock. They've dominated the clock. They've dominated the running game. Now the fly on the wall is their adjustments aren't so major as the ones that Wheaton South has to make because really Lake Zurich has dominated this first half. So the question is what adjustments did Wheaton South make at halftime. I kind of think that they're saying OK we've got two choices here. Do we want to let him throw the ball with Zach Till who doesn't like to throw the ball or do we want to continue to let Brindley run all over us. I'm saying they're making all the adjustments from a defensive run standpoint. They're going to do everything in their power to take Brindley away and force Zach Till to throw the football. One thing about Wheaton Warrenville South the big stage does not intimidate them in week number two this season. They were on ESPN U. This is the second time that actually Wheaton South this year including tonight have been on an ESPN family of networks and that ball game they knocked off Maine South one of the teams that we will see in 8 a coming up against Mount Carmel they defeated Maine South in week two 44 to 7 and here's a team Wheaton Warrenville South who has been in the absolute spotlight all season long defending champs highly rated in national polls are ranked as high as number 13 in USA today this they're not going to be intimidated by anything or overwhelmed by anything in the atmosphere well not at all when you've been averaging in your nine year career as a head coach over 10 wins a year you know that during those 10 win seasons on that that's on an average he's had great teams and, and he's had a great coaching staff and he's been in tough games he's been in big games and the key and I hate to be redundant but they are in such a very tough conference in the DuPage Valley weekend and week out they are playing playoff teams so when they get in the playoffs it's not any different than their regular season schedule. Now look at their non-conference games aside from their schedule their non-conference first game or excuse me their second game was Maine South who's playing for a state championship. So I mean it doesn't get any tougher than it is right now. It's never easy for him. Everybody's after him. That's quite a possession sandwich formed right there for Wheaton Warrenville South. Ron Mewich has to like the bread. A touchdown on the top, a touchdown on the bottom on their first and last plays of the first half. Three punts and an interception in the middle and that's what Brian Stortz was saying if I can eliminate the uh, big plays I'd be in business for the Tigers will get an opportunity here to get their hands on the ball first when we start the second half they lead it 14 10 and you can see that the, they are ready to go and it's kind of interesting you see all the yelling down there but Ron Mewich actually says this is one of the quieter teams that he has had they're not necessarily all that emotional he is so proud of them as how they've stood up in the limelight and overcome some adversity and in fact they have done it here tonight. I, I don't know that we can minimize the impact of the loss of Travis Kern. Titus Davis has stepped up. Kern part of that three headed receiver monster of Schumann Davis and Kern. Kern broke his collarbone last week and that may have been some of the early disruptions early in that offensive unit. Well there's no doubt about that but other kids have come up big but I think a big factor a big factor for him is that he's got to get Matt Rogers going the running back number nine who's had over a thousand yards and 20 touchdowns he hasn't touched the ball but a handful of times and that's got to take the pressure off O'Toole to open up the passing game now you can look at both of those sandwich scores early and late but they need to be more consistent between the bread and what happens is that answer to that is Matt Rogers they've got to free him up to start the running game to get those linebackers to stay up tight for the run to allow the passing game to develop better you know and I know we always talk about the first possessions here of the third quarter. Well, getting the ball first, it will be Wheaton Warrenville South. You get a good look at Matt Rogers, those numbers. Lake Zurich on the defensive side. How much will each team's possessions here to start this third quarter mean? Will it send a message, much as the message was sent early by Wheaton South, but answered by Lake Zurich in the first half? Well, you'll be able to tell in the first couple of possessions what adjustments were made to the half. I mean all of a sudden you start, you see Wheaton South here when they come out they start running Matt Rogers a little bit more that'll give you an indication of what adjustment they made. Big kickoff into the end zone the Tigers to start it from their own 20 yard line and Lake Zurich is smart enough to realize also the, the threat that Matt Rogers is as a running back and he hasn't been utilized in the first half and basically because of how they've played defense. It's not that uh, that uh, Ron Muhitch doesn't want to get him the football. He hadn't had been in a situation where he's been able to do it because Lake Zurich had the ball the entire first half for the most part. Look from behind the Wheaton Warrenville South offense, an offense that coming into this game had averaged 43 points per game. Had a running clock eight times this year. There you go, Matt Rogers. First play of the game. Flag is down. 
Rodgers in midfield and beyond. Ridden down to the 32 yard line, but there is one yellow handkerchief sitting at about the 21 yard line. A 48 yard gain by Rodgers, maybe coming back. Well, as we mentioned, the key will be Matt Rogers, what they do coming out in that first possession. He ends up carrying the football, so that kind of tells you what adjustments were made. The Lake Zurich fans love it. A holding call going against the Tigers, wiping out the 48 yarder. We've had our share of penalties tonight. That will be the ninth penalty of this game. Be interesting to see now the adjustment. Now going from a 48 yard gain to a 10 yard loss so a 58 yard difference in that particular play and being the first play of the second half that's very crucial. Recall the first half first we'll get our call here from Ted LaPucky holding on the offense 10 yard penalty repeat first down. It's always more dramatic with the fans when it's a long run and the penalty is called but it's called immediately you can see it right there just grabs onto him and holds on to him. It's, it's a great effort by Matt Rogers an outstanding run. Dom DeAngelis number 59. I like the culprit there first and 20. They pick the hand off to Rogers O'Toole will push it up to about the 16 yard line and it was in the first half right in this same area of the field. The Lake Zurich's defense slammed the door on Wheaton Warrenville South led to a punt near midfield. And that's when the Bears took it down and tied this game at seven. Well, part of this package is Wheaton Warrenville South has got to get the ball to midfield or somewhere thereabouts so that if they do have to punt, they're going to put Lake Zurich in a hole. They don't want to give them good posi field position in the middle of the field and then have them run the ball for six or seven minutes down into the end zone. Talk about dominating the performances to get to Champaign. That's exactly what Wheaton Warrenville South did. A 40 to 20 win over Glenbard West. That's the closest game. The Tigers have played all year. Roger shakes a couple of tackles and he will be about six yards short of the first down. That game against Glenbard West, you talk about playing on a big stage once again in the quarterfinals. Game last year, right here on this field, a double overtime win for Wheaton Warrenville South over Glenbard West. It was the Hilltoppers that came in looking to maybe upset the Tigers. Didn't happen. Well, it's kind of interesting the adjustments that Lake Zurich's making here, and they're doing a lot of shifting up front. You'll see their defensive lineman now. He's down over the ball right now on the center, and then you'll see him start sliding around. Like when it's in shotgun like this, he'll stay over the center to keep the field balanced. Good tip. And an nope. incomplete pass. They're going to say that catch was not made by Pro. And with that. Ball will be punted away. Ball was tipped by a linebacker dropping underneath. Good coverage, good drops by the linebackers. You can see right here, good pressure, but watch the linebacker getting there, gets up, tips the ball. Look like Jack Lynn to get his hands on the ball. Number 14 will take a look from here. It was Lynn. Ball comes up short for Crow. See the good pursuit by linebackers of Lake Zurich getting to the football. Now they're going to give him good field position here. Another fair catch will have to be called by Brindley, but he'll make it. At his own 47 yard line. 29 yard punt for O'Toole. And we have seen already here tonight, we've only played a couple of minutes in the third quarter. Penalties have had an impact on this game in terms of stopping drives or hindering drives. They certainly have, and it'll be interesting now. We saw the initial adjustment that Wheaton Warrensville South wanted to make as far as getting uh, Rodgers back in the ball game as far as the running back. Now it'll be interesting. There won't be, I don't think, any major changes by Lake Zurich as far as their offensive schemes. But what you can see right now, they're basically playing a 10 man front as far as Wheaton South to stop the run game. They're the ones that are making the adjustments. They started with the handoff to Millars. It looked like he may have left the ball behind him momentarily, kind of fumbled there near his knees, trying to get that ball back. Take a look at it right here. Zach Till down low under center. Well, the Lars was down. The ball came loose. And there it is, just kind of laying there. You see 10 men within five yards of the line of scrimmage for Wheaton South. Looking for a block. And able to squirt through the hole. That time is Brindley. He rushed for 188 yards in the first half. He carried the ball 25 times. In the first half. That's amazing. I think there was one drive there where he carried the ball about 11 consecutive times. Here's Brindley right here. He was grabbed by number 48, Adam Dansdill. 
six one junior. Third and five. Spreading them out. Trying to pull those linebackers out of there so there's more running lanes for the tailback. And there Bradley it is. It. First down. If you can't if you can't blow them off the ball with your blocking scheme you take them off the ball by formation and that's exactly what Lake Zurich did they spread the field by formation and then they open it up and a nice job of base blocking by the offensive line there nice job by uh, John Mulvey the right guard 6 1 230 pound senior with that run Jacob Brindley has just broken the class 7 8 championship game record. 194 yards by Brian Geddes. I think Prospect. he just lost one of those yards. <laughs> it's Edwardsville and Brindley sitting right now at 198. Now there's going to be a play, a play action pass somewhere along the line here where Zach Till is going to throw one and it's going to end up in a big play if not a score because right now there's basically a 10 man front when they stay in tight with their double wing look. And that's the kind of play that they want to set up with a play action pass. We're going to get a penalty right here. And it's not going to be a delay of the game. It's going to be uh, illegal substitution, I think. Ryan Storch was running players in and out. Here is Brindley's night to date 7 8 title game record with 198 yards. Dead ball, illegal substitution on the offense. God, if I could have answered out. stuff like that when I was in school, who knows where it could have led? That's pretty frightening. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. It's a frightening <laughs> thought, isn't it? Every well, time I raised my hands, the teachers just thought I had to go to the washroom. It wasn't to answer questions. Here we go. Big play here. Just got a lot tougher on second down and 17. Big adjustments. Wheaton South is doing it on the fly. Oh! Until escape. He'll get positive yardage, but he'll still be at third and about 14. Good job of Wheaton South of swarming to the football, cutting them off from the outside, forcing them back into the middle, and then everybody squeezes down inside. Two outstanding defenses. You can see right here, this is forced by the defense. He's looking down the field, but the pressure, now he can't afford to look down the field. He's just running for his life, and everybody's getting to the football. Dansdale was there waiting for him. Third and long, they need 14 yards for a first down. Till, trouble. Down he goes. Sparty Chino, he's the one that's celebrating the 5 foot 10, 165 pound senior nose tackle. 165 is about 15 pounds too generous for the wrestler up the middle. That was a very, very tough series for Lake Zurich right there. Well, you put 10 men in the box, and that's the difference. The rushing game. That's why they tried to throw the ball, but when you have a 10 man front, it's also 10 more, that's 10 rushers. Bednarz, he'll give it a shot. Good coverage. Caleb Bednarz, who actually played in the 2007 championship game as a punt returner for Wheaton Warrenville South as a freshman in that 7 3 loss to Wheaton Warrenville South. He's not happy with that return, but if he looks at the board, he sees his teams on top 14 10. It is cold in Champaign. The hot chocolate is out. Ski caps are on and they're dressed in white. And we've got a great one here in 7A. Ron Muich looking for his third state championship in the seventh overall for Wheaton Warrenville South on top here in the midway point of the third quarter. They'll go in the ground, big hole Rogers. Again near the 30. Well, they really spread out that front. The holes were created by the formations and the splits by the offensive linemen. There was giant, giant gaps in between the three-man front. They seal right here. There's a huge hole without even blocking it, but a nice job by the front five of Wheaton South. Quick 13 yards for Rogers. Bootleg pass. Davis could not keep those feet in and a flag is down at the 34 yard line right near where Davis made that attempt. About four yards behind Davis. Illegal receiver downfield. 
again, interesting play calling here as far as running, getting Matt Rogers involved in the ball game, and then after he's had some big runs, they squeeze inside with the play action fake, and then they get Riley O'Toole out on the perimeter with a flood route off the bootleg. As great as Wheaton Warrenville South has been this year en route to their 13 and 0 record. Ineligible downfield on the offense. Five they, yard penalty. They Three have first struggled down. with penalties. They have committed more penalties than one would expect from a 13 and 0 team. Well this is our 11th penalty a game for both teams and the fifth penalty for Wheaton Warrenville South leaves Zurich has six. When you're aggressive you're going to have penalties. It's just that you don't want them at crucial times and unfortunately a couple have been. Rogers on first down and 15 will get about three Rogers hard running 185 pounder is the tackle made by number 43 Taylor Coleman. I'm interested to look at how the adjustments are being made by Lake Zurich on their defensive front. Wheaton Warrenville South has taken them out of the normal look they're really spreading the field and stretching those linebackers way out. On second and 11. Oh, pressure coming from Mike Shield. O'Toole gets rid of it. He gets it out to Sean Lynch. Now he stunned it. There was a stunt coming from the outside, and that should have been about an eight yard loss. And he was able to get out of You'll see him coming right off the edge, right after the fake. Watch the man come right into your screen right there. And he makes the play to get past him. Nice throw, nice catch. So they stun it right in. Number two is coming right off the edge, and a little clip possibly there. But good poise by O'Toole. Never, never looking down, always looking downfield for his receivers. That's a sign of an outstanding quarterback. Yet another big third down here early in the third quarter. They need four yards. They'll have it and more with a pass to Rodgers at the 44 yard line. Interesting scheme there. They put trips to that side trips being three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. But they kept the tight end in to block the threat on the sprint out which was kind of an interesting scheme and then the inside slot man was wide open. Watch him roll to his left but the tight end is blocking right there. And then he throws it to the second man out out in the flat. Nice pickup. Big first down. O'Toole 9 of 16 now in the air. Rogers getting a little bit extra duty work here in the third quarter. And Rogers doesn't have to make the big run to make this effective. The effectiveness of, of this adjustment at halftime by Wheaton South is to have him running between the tackles to keep those linebackers inside to set up the play action pass and O'Toole sliding out on the perimeter. It wasn't that he needed to be making you know 50 yard runs. It was just that they're running him more. You know it's interesting because Rogers his long run of the year is just 31 yards yet he averages six yards per carry but it's because of that offensive line not a huge offensive line for Wheaton South. Good job of pursuit by Lake Zurich right there. That will bring up another third down at about four four and a half yards. And what you're seeing right now is Wheaton Warrenville South taking time off of this clock as we approach the three minute mark here in the third quarter. Third down conversions tonight both teams working at thirty three and a third percent. Wheaton South two of six Lake Zurich three of nine. What I like is the way that Lake Zurich uses the sideline once that the ball is on the hash mark of O'Toole sprints to the short side of the field. They use the sideline as another contain man which gives them twelve people and they squeeze him. To the sideline and force and reduce the air he goes. Now he's going back to the wide side. Pressure, ball up, and incomplete. Boy, that was a risky pass for O'Toole, but he had three different players surrounding him. Well, that that was a, a very unusual lack of poise by Riley O'Toole. Of course, he had three people coming at him. I wouldn't guess that's happened too much to him this season. No, it hasn't. But they haven't played teams like, well, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say they haven't played teams like Lake Zurich, but that's not true. They've played probably 12 out of their 13 teams have been very competitive. The scores wouldn't indicate that, but the teams they play are quality. Another good punt. And again, Brindley, no chance to return. He'll have to make that fair catch and 
after the punt of 31 yards for O'Toole. No return. Lake Zurich will have it at the 32-yard line. The Bears looking for their second state title in school history. They'll have it when we come back. 14-10, Wheaton Warrenville South, the 7A championships. Brought to you by Country Financial. Here is your scoring. About as even as you can get that seven in the second quarter for Wheaton Warrenville South. That came with 17 seconds to play as Till coming out of the break will get about nine yards and a good run up the middle. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. We were talking about the competition that Wayne, uh, Wheaton Warrenville South has played. They've they've won 25 games in a row, which is incredible, especially when you think of the competition they play week in and week out. And I know that that sounds beating a dead horse, but I can't tell you how emphasized how what a tough schedule they play. And they this is the 10th time in their in the history of the school that they've been in a title game. He's Look, gone. Mike Shield breaks free. Ben Mays has the angle. Shield down to the 20 yard line. 49 yards by Mike Shield, his brother playing on the 2007 championship team, and Shield makes an impact here. Boy, what a big play that was. And it, it all is because of Brenly right there. They flowed with the fake to Brenly, and then they came back with good block and a little counter, not a reverse, but a counter coming back with Shield, who normally is a running back or flanker. Just a great call and a great execution. So number 53 Mike Kuhn with a big block to spring him. And short gain on first down to the 20 yard line. There's Mike Kuhn. Six foot 215 pound senior. They do a good job getting their linemen out on the perimeter blocking these littler defensive backs and it's tough to do when you're that big to get out on an island and try and pick off a DB. You can see they're checking their wristbands. On their wristbands is the formation, the play, and the cadence. Quickly. Quick pitch. Shield again. Oh, he takes a big hit, and he's about four yards short of the first down. Looks like Dan still got him. Now, there's a job of coaching by Stortz. What he's doing is he's taking advantage of maybe the adjustment that Wheaton Warrenville South has made in regard to Brenly. We talked about earlier take away Brenly so he fakes Brenly's in, in the other halfback position they come back to the other back because the linebackers were flowing towards Brenly initially. So now they're using shield as a diversion and a, and a good job of it. Three yards to go for a first down. Millar's the fullback. First down first and goal at the five. He doesn't get the ball very much, but when he does, 165 pound senior, he makes it makes it happen. Short yardage. They get used to working on the outside of the tackles. And right there, it's just nothing more than a little dive to the to the fullback. Nice job of blocking the port of attack by Kuhn and Herman and Garcia. Looking for the go-ahead score. Waning seconds. Of the third quarter, Shield powers his way up. He'll be short. Just the quickest thing to do to outrun a quick defense is go right at him, and that was just nothing more than a quick dive right at him. Looking for a surge from the left side of the line, Palumbo to left tackle, and Hem to left guard. Get in behind them and look for a surge. Boy, you can see how fired up that entire offensive unit is. The team slogan. Or Lake Zurich is we are relentless. And that's what they're talking about right now. And that takes us to the end of three. What a way to get into the fourth quarter of your 7A championship game. Wheaton Warrenville South, the 14-10 lead. Lake Zurich knocking on the door. Fourth quarter coming up on the IHSA Television Network. Second down and goal from the one yard line. 6 2 defensive front by Wheaton South. A fullback. Millars buries his head and he is in for the go ahead score. Two seconds into the fourth quarter. It's a 16 14 Lake Zurich lead. And the Bears fans going wild. It was very interesting during that break between quarters after Brian Stortz had talked to his team. 
His team sprinted out onto the field. Storts turned to the huge Lake Zurich crowd here and said, keep quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Well, you know why? Because he was going to run an audible down there, depending on which direction they were going to run that dive. Depending on the defensive front and which way they slid, they wanted that fullback was going to get the ball in either case, but it was either going to be left or right, depending on the audible call. Big extra point by Mike Leva. Let's take a look at it right here. He's deciding which front you can see right there where they blocked down because the man that was over the center went into the A gap. The tackle blocked down on him. The fullback came right in behind his defense or his offensive tackle. Good call on the part of uh, Lake Zurich. Good job of blocking at the point of attack by Big 56. Mike Palumbo and Mike Ham, the left guard, Steve Garcia, the center. And Mike Snur, the tight end, good job from the left side of the offensive line. That's how you score touchdowns when you're in a goal line offense. John Millars caps that 78 yard drive. It took three minutes and a second off the clock. And back and forth we go. Wheaton South had taken a 7 0 lead. Lake Zurich tied it at 7. Field goal by Mike Leva made it 10 7 until once again the O'Toole Davis connection with 17 seconds of play in the first half. Gave Wheaton Warrenville South the 14 7 lead, and now the run by Millard 17 14. Wow. That, that is right. That's how it goes back and forth. It's been everything that's been talked about. It's been one heck of a football game by two, two outstanding high school football teams. You have a team in blue that absolutely believes in a team in white that refuses to lose. Bednars, he's a playmaker. Short side of the field. And for just a quick second there, it looked like he may have had a chance, as it is, a 20 yard return for Caleb Bednars. And well, the offensive unit for Wheaton South on the field. Good run back here. He's looking for the lane. You can see they're trying to set something up, but good hustle turning him inside. And that's where you want to turn him. You don't want him letting him get to the outside where he can outrun the. Uh, Eight people that are in the inside. You always have two guys they call safeties that stay back to look for those guys breaking out to the perimeter. This is a run all the way by O'Toole, and he'll get that big 210 pound frame rolling, and that's an eight yard pickup on first down. Wheaton South isn't going to get rattled easy. They've been in this state championship game four out of the last five years. So when you have that kind of continuity in a program, you don't get rattled very easily. Six times they are state champs in 92, 95, 96, 97, 2006, and last year, 2009. They're looking to go back to back just as Montini did earlier today in 5A. Here's the spread. Good pressure. First down completion to his tight end, Schumann. Out of bounds at his own 43. Now, with that, by having him spread out like that, the man that was supposed to be the under coverage on number 99, Jason Schumann, right there, had to come up to contain. So that opened up Schumann. If you'll see the rush man once he starts rolling out here the guy that's supposed to have Schumann has to come up under pressure. Now normally he'd be the underneath coverage on that. So just by that movement of him getting out in the perimeter created that pass completion. Good call by Ron Muhich. He does a great job thinking on the run. They fake the handoff to Rogers. O'Toole keeps it. The Bears weren't buying it. That's the quarterback counter where you fake to the running back Matt Rogers and then you come back with the guard and tackle. It's just a trap and now they're using the quarterback doing it and that was not a very successful play due to the good pursuit of Lake Zurich. J.J. Rappleson number six for Lake Zurich 116 tackles on the season coming in. He had 23 sacks coming into this championship game. Three year starter. That front three of Lake Zurich the front three defensive linemen Hussey. Cameron and McGee have done an outstanding job in this ball game. They've had a lot of pressure on them, but they've come through. O'Toole to the sidelines, and he finds his man, Ryan Crow. It was Till that went high for the deflection attempt, but instead it goes for a 22 yard completion and a first down for the Tigers. And this is exactly what we talked about, about keeping those linebackers in. This is nothing more than a throwback against the grain. He gives a roll one way, which gets the linebackers to flow in his direction and opens up the underneath coverage, throwing back to the tight end away from the flow. Good call, better execution. It's actually Till that came in late on that play. Early moments, fourth quarter. 
O'Toole running like a fullback to the 24 yard line. Now in that case he's the quarterback but basically he's a tailback because that was nothing more than a quarterback lead or quarterback power. And when you're six foot three 210 pounds that's a good size running back. Looks like we're going to get a measurement here. Riley O'Toole be playing his collegiate football right here on his field that can wait right now. Obviously he wants to win a state championship because he'd like to go back to back but he wants to do it with his friends last year. He did it as a junior won a state title here this year it's the senior class his buddies. That's who he wants to win the title with and for this season. Well you can see there's not a lot of quarterbacks in the state that would run with that kind of power and determination. If three ball carries bring him down he picks up the first down excuse me short of the first down by about a yard and a half. Well, you can just tell how they break their huddles these two teams can't wait to get to that next snap of the ball. O'Toole came in with the highly touted passing numbers 4.6 yard average tonight the 46 yards on 10 carries he's also thrown for 156 and a couple of touchdowns. Well he's had to make adjustments due to the loss of a, a wide receiver and so Ron Muhich has taken advantage of his athleticism to make more things happen. Now it's Rogers first down. Good tackle on the play by number eight Chris Rantis. Randis could not deny the first down but he made that good ankle tackle. Boy, this has really been an outstanding football game. I'm just very impressed by both offenses of both teams doing what they're supposed to do. The run game with the double wing and the yeah. and the spread formation by Lake Zurich and the spread and the multiple pro sets by Wheaton South. They do exactly what they're supposed to do and defensively. They're, they're a mirror of each other. Davis came in motion. O'Toole looks his way and he finds him inside a 15 yard line. Just short of another first down. Good routes. Those are all timing routes, getting him to sprint out. And you think about it here's a right handed quarterback and he's running to his left. But you notice how he throws, tries to get that shoulder upfield, but gets a lot on the ball. That is. A lot of time spent in the summertime and all these passing leagues that go on and Ron Muhich takes his teams to a lot of different passing leagues on Saturdays and plays different schools during the week and those kids get a lot of repetition throwing the football in seven on seven. As good as O'Toole was last year it was that seven on seven work that took him to this level quickly to Davis he's going to try to do it on his own Davis right there at the goal line he'll be a yard short first down and goal coming up. Little bubble screen out there, well executed. A lot of timing involved in the in this bubble screens outside. You can see how he fakes it and he goes right outside. The fake is it, it holds up long enough for the other wide receiver to block the receiver's man. That's the whole reason for that fake is to set up the timing of that block. If you did it too quickly, they'd never be able to get it off. Rogers for the lead. They have it. Wheaton South retakes the lead at 20 to 17. Would I be facetious to say we've got ourselves a ball game. We still have nine plus minutes to play. And another big extra point coming up Brian Welker is going to get all lined up Brian starts the head coach for Lake Zurich checks that play chart. He'll have to figure out what he wants to do when he comes back. What's interesting is the balance now of the total offenses of both teams Lake Zurich has 281 yards of total offense. And Wheaton South has 262 yards. It's balancing up quite rapidly, but Lake Zurich has 282 yards of rush offense. 21 17, the lead for Wheaton Warrenville South. The Tigers, top ranked in the state all season long, the consensus number one team in the state in any class. And with Rogers' touchdown run here, they are nine minutes and 14 seconds away a long time away from going back to back with state titles. Good job right up there at the point of attack some wedge blocking with the lead blocker. Joe Hall is center 225 pounder right guard John Mulvey 230 pounds left guard Tom DeAngelis 220 pounds right tackle 285 Luke Lowerson and the left tackle 
Eric Lowerson, 6'5, 225. Now, that offensive line averages about 240 pounds if I'm doing my math correctly, and I normally don't, and about 6'4. So that's a big offensive line to run behind, especially when you only have a yard to go for a touchdown. Total offense in this game 543 yards at this point. And that sets a 7A title game record, a previous record, 538. That was set. In 2003, Libertyville and Oswego. And we still have nine minutes to go. And these were two teams with two great defenses as well. It has been the total package here tonight in this 7 8 championship. We've seen precision passing by Wheaton South. We've seen outstanding efforts in the run game by Lake Zurich. Just an outstanding high school football game. John Millar's the short return to about the 23 yard line. These teams met in 2007. That year, it was Lake Zurich, a 7-3 win over Wheaton Warrenville South. Well, this will be interesting now. You know, this is right into Lake Zurich's. Here we take a look at the sideline here for Wheaton South. Riley O'Toole, highly touted quarterback, all hyped up on the sideline. Well, he is ready to go out a winner. Millars takes a big hit at the line. He does not have the ball. Instead, it's Till who keeps it. You mentioned the Lewerson brothers, the twin brothers in the offensive line. That's who Riley O'Toole went and did a little chest bump with there on the near sideline. He was bumping chest with Eric Lewerson. Glad we'll get some broken bones to him that. Nice five yard pickup on first down for Till. Checking his wristband for the formation in the play. Go, go to Shield. Straight dive. That's interesting. We have not seen Brindley touch the ball, but maybe two or three times here in this second half. But again, part of that reason is that he has people spying on him. And what that basically means is there's a linebacker that is just assigned to him and probably even a defensive back where they're going wherever he's going. So now you've got to change that up a little bit and go to some other people and Shields been the go to guy in the second half. That was the adjustment that Wheaton South they said we're going to take friendly away. We can only do that for so long. Though. One yard to go for a first down. It's third down. And now a flag out from the back judge and he's looking at the play clock a delay of game call against Lake Zurich. However the Bears took a timeout timeout just before that Lake Zurich. That's a tight one right there. It sure is. That was a crucial time. Ryan starts will regroup. So will we 751 to play. It's a beauty in 7A. On third and one, Brian Stortz had the call to go to Brindley. Does he come right back here following the timeout? Till will keep it. Till looks to get a block on the outside. He does. Zach Till across midfield. Again, they're trying to take away Brindley, and that fake inside pulled the linebackers inside. It was nothing more than an option to get on the perimeter, and that's what Zach Till did. Watch the fake here to Brindley. Right here, squeezes the linebacker. You saw him come right there. Till gets out on the perimeter, makes the big run for 18 yards, and a big, big first down. That was a crucial play, Dave. And it comes, so we approach the midway point here of the fourth quarter. From the 49 yard line, Lake Zurich chasing four points. Brindley with them. Needs one block to the outside. Brindley brought back the 32 first down, Lake Zurich, a gain of 16. I think I mentioned two plays ago, you can only hold Brindley down for so long. Now, in here, down inside, as they get it probably another 10 yards in the red zone, you watch here, just a good trap right there, but he bounces it outside where good sustaining of blocks allows him to get into the open field. And in most cases, normally you don't catch him. Well, that's what it's been all about all season long. Wing South, the balanced attack, Lake Zuri doing it on the ground. Till will not add much to that rushing total you just saw. They're trying to they're trying to take a lead, little heat off of Brenly. Zach Till is not the, the threat, obviously, in a run game. He's had 404 yards rushing and 104 carries this year for six touchdowns, as long as being 50 yards. But he's still not the threat that uh, Brenly is. But it's just just to control the defensive line a little bit. 
Take a look at those numbers. Do the math. Minus one yard in the passing game tonight for Lake Zurich. They keep it on the ground to Brindley. He's grabbed, oh. thrown down, and a flag comes in as Jack Lipinski wrestles him to the turf. Holding. Ten yard walk off coming big, up. Big penalty there. And now does Till have to go to the air here? We still have plenty of time. Well, it's two down territory for one thing. And he has a threat of Brenly on the perimeter, and there's two ways of getting him on the perimeter. You can run the run the option. In the past, they used to run a quick pitch, which gets him out there real quickly, or screen or draw. You know, Zach Till is not the, you know, he's not a, a, a no tool. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. But he can throw the short stuff. And, and you know, when you're throwing a screener or running a draw, it's a little easier for a quarterback. Yeah, right that was going to be an option right there, but he didn't give it enough time to develop. Till two of four tonight in the air. And again, it's been that quick defense. But we've warned Bill South that he stopped this passing game such as it is. They get to Brindley. Running to the outside. Another, Another flag, flag goes down. Oh, no, he's had a touchdown. It's going to be called back. Brindley comes up short of the goal line, but a flag sits at the 35 yard line. It came out, Holding and it's again. another hold. Now, does, was it that hold that sprung him? Well, only the films will tell. Well, the other part of that is what I like about this is the officials, they're not looking to see if it's, or it's a two yard loss or a two yard gain. It's an infraction and they're throwing the flag and that's what their job is. And remember this. We can't have a football game if there are not any officials. And so you know you might get upset or whatever with a call but the officials do a great job 99.9% .9 of the time. Now you Holding have to tell me Jack on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. Notice how it's well, easy for me up here to that's say that. Uh, you knew where I was going. That's right. The sidelines are a little different. Right here, we'll try and spot it, but it's it's sometimes difficult. There it is, right there, Number right there. Got him by the elbow. Gus Kuhn, we and call. that that looks like it could have led to a to yes. a run there, but I'm not going to second guess. No matter if he gained a yard or lost a yard, it still was an infraction. Second down and 24 yards to go. Till he's open. Oh, he's he didn't had see a man him, open. and this ball is loose. He and had a man wide open down the middle of the field. Mark Dorfman was wide open on the right hash and instead the ball comes free recovered by Wheaton Warrenville South coming up with the number 39 R.J. Hochelle the drive comes to an end and the Tigers will have it with 606 here it is oh he gets rattled a little bit here the pressure and he has a man wide open down the middle of the field right there coming into your screen. Boy, that was a piece of meat thrown out there for that Wheaton Warrenville South defense. So quick to react. Well, they need to turn over here or stop. Tigers going right at him. O'Toole. Oh, it's going to be picked. Oh. A chance for the interception. Oh, my. When that ball left his hand, it just floated. I, it looked like he was thrown to a Lake Zurich player because he was the only guy that was in that area. And what happened was his own man coming over to help defend knocked him off the ball. Oh. Again here, Ryan was trying to take advantage of that turnover, hoping to catch Lake Zurich on their heels and pound one in on him for a big play to get him better field position. Let's watch Riley O'Toole here. During this pass, he looks away and then he comes back and he's he got pressure right in the chest and threw it on his heels. That's why the ball kind of uh, sailed a little bit on him. You could see he took a hit. Yet he's going to run it. It will be third down and about five on the next snap. Clock moving. State championship. You got all kinds of uh, days after today to take care of those aches and pains. Timeout situation. Lake Zurich with two left. Wade Warrenville South, all three. Well, I think Ron knows that if Lake Zurich gets the ball back, it might be the last time that Wade Warrenville South sees the ball. So this is a crucial play for him. And the key, the thing is, where they have it here, even if they don't pick it up, they're going to have to they'll punt Lake Zurich down in the full poor field position. Play action. Looking for five yards, it'll be short. It. 
It will be short. Completion to Sean Lynch. Don't know whether he ran that pattern to its fullest, but he is about a yard short of the first down. I think he's got to punt it. But no one ran, who mm. knows? I mean, there's a lot of this is a big call right here. There's no doubt about it. But great timing route. This is your summer practice right here. Just on the out route, nice route outside, picks up the first down or just short of the first down, excuse me. Well, tools in the game. He is the punter, he is the quarterback. It. And they are going to, they need almost two yards. Now, what they might do here if he does not go under center, well, he is. There's nobody over the center. He's going to quarterback sneak it. He's going to quarterback sneak it. No, oh, he's trying to pull him off. They didn't fall for it. What great, great mental discipline by Lake Zurich. That's outstanding. I mean, in a crucial scenario, this kind of a scene, and you had all that pressure on you, and you, you're anxious to jump on the ball and be pulled offside, and they don't do it. Great job by Lake Zurich's defense. Well, the Wayne Warrenville South fans thought number 26 Cody Cameron penetrated that neutral zone. However, Cameron took a little banana took a little shape. Angle. Yes, yep. he did. Well, this is kind of an interesting situation. When he was under center right there, initially, there was nobody over the center. So he could have went for a quarterback sneak. Normally, there, you put a man on the center to take away that short yardage. Ooh, mercy. <laughs> And he was looking for it and then he calls a timeout but he had enough poise to call a timeout. But my point being that normally with short yardage you'll put a man on the center or even put what we call a stack guys over the guard so that you can't have a quarterback sneak. And I was kind of surprised you see how far number six is off the line that he didn't quarterback sneak but obviously they were pinching inside. Cameron never crossed into that neutral zone boy J.J. Raffleson number six. He was holding steady right there, wasn't he? Now, looks like O'Toole is going to drop the punt. Now we got, this could be an illegal substitution. He was not in the huddle, but it wasn't, this was coming out of a timeout. You never know what they're going to do here when you got the quarterbacks a punter. O'Toole, not sure what he's asking for. He's Lake saying Zurich's that Lake Zurich timeout. takes timeout. Ooh, that's a big timeout. With 5 11 to play, it will leave the Bears with just you one why? timeout they might, remaining. They were short a player. They were short a player. Good, well, good call by Coach Storts. We have to play 11 on 11 in this game. We have 5 11 to play. A punt coming up, or maybe not. Stay there. All right, what's what's Wynn Warrenville South going to do here on fourth and a yard? Chess match. Here it is. Option. First oh, down. A flag oh, is down. And a flag is down. Touchdown coming back. Wow. O'Toole the touchdown run of 54 yards. He doesn't know yet. He doesn't know yet. He's too busy celebrating to know that it's coming back. Now he does. And now he's going to have to punt. Now he's going to have to punt. Wow, what a change. This is amazing. Yeah. Lake Zurich people are awful happy about that yellow flag. I think they yell like yellow now instead of white. <laughs> well, how about the turn of events here in the last couple of minutes with Penalties calling back big gains and in this case a touchdown. Here it is right here. They're going for it the whole time. It's just the power letting him go for it. He needs three yards. There's the hole right there. Very obvious. Very, very obvious. Number 59, Dom DeAngelis. He's going for a touchdown and it's coming back and now they will punt. And with five minutes left in the ball game, this is not the kind of team that you want to give the football back to. Lake Zurich has controlled the ball the first half. That hold could have also gone against number 55 Eric Lewerson. It really doesn't matter right at the moment. The bottom line is Lake Zurich will get their hands back in the ball. Good, another good kick. No fair catch from Brindley here. Oh, he's got to get to the outside. Oh no. <laughs> He could not run away making the stop and what a great tackle it was for Wheaton Warrenville South Tyler Cook 38 yard punt minus 11 on the return. He lost trying to make a big play and that kind of hurt him field possession wise lost 11 yards on that and he ran 40 yards to lose 11 because he's going back against grain all the way back across across the field. Lake Zurich plus 12 time of possession Brindley 
No gain, maybe a loss on the play. Possession time right now for the Lake Zurich Bears. It's 4.45 with the clock running. Here's who's going to have to come up and help them right now, Shields and Zach Till. They're going to have to make some plays and take a little pressure off Brenlin. He's been the workhorse. He just ran that punt back. Wheaton South, everybody in the stadium knows and, and is watching Brenlin. Till and Shields have to make a play. Second down and 11. Brindley positive yardage. We'd be about six yards short of the first down on third down. And it's going to be a four down scenario. I'm just amazed at the endurance and conditioning of, of Brindley. It's his 33rd carry. He's up over 220 yards. You can see right there with the, the exhaust pipes are. There's the pass. Screen. And it is smelled out, wow. and it will be more minus yardage in the passing game. All you got to do is follow Brenly. He's going to take you to the football. Caleb Bednars right there watching it all the way. And he's their big defensive back. He's keying on him the whole way. Right there. Look at he never left that spot. He was he was eyeballing Brenly the entire time. And with that loss, it is no longer four down territory. It is time to punt. Zarkowitz from his own goal line. Watch out, coach. Tigers would be best to let this thing just roll. To the 49 yard line with 309 to play. Boy, this has been one, one great football game. Two outstanding programs, two outstanding football coaches. You talk and about two programs that are here all the time. Two schools that completely, absolutely support their team, as do their communities. You can tell by the crowd we have here tonight for this 7A game. Well, they need a turnover. He's going under center to make sure they avoid that. They're going to pound Rogers. We'll get about four. Remember, Lake Zurich just one timeout remaining. A first down could pretty much ice it right here for the Tigers. Well, and the only drawback for Lake Zurich, as proficient as they are on offense, they are not a passing team. They've only thrown 70 times. Excuse me. I'm looking at the wrong stat. I mean, they've only thrown 146 passes completed the entire season in 13 games. So obviously the, the key is their running game. So this is really puts them in a bind here. Rogers on a good cut. A first down. Now well, they're going to have to start at the football. First guy make contact and then the rest come in and start stripping at that ball. Need a turnover desperately here. And Wheaton Warrenville knows that and they're going to be controlling that ball and hanging on to it with two hands. You may just see O'Toole just put that thing in his belly. And not risk any handoff. We're coming up on two minutes to play a fresh set of downs for Wheaton Warrenville South. Ron Mewich looking for his third state championship. They will pitch it to Rogers. No gain, maybe a loss on the play. Till the tackle. And right now, Lake Zurich uses their final timeout with a buck 56 to play. Well, it's all about stripping right now, and I'm actually a little surprised they put that ball in the air even though it was on the, on the pitch. pitch. Exactly. You're exactly right. Under these weather conditions where it's cold, I was a little surprised at that toss. I thought it would be a handoff off tackle or something along those lines, but nothing where there's any air between the, the ball and who's ever touching it. You have some pretty straight faces right there in the Lake Zurich student section. They haven't given up yet. Doesn't look good for the Bears right now. Well, it's in interesting statistics. Wheaton Warrenville South has averaged over their 13 games coming in here 43 points a game and have given up an average of a uh, total of seven points on average per game. Lake Zurich, on the other hand, has averaged uh, 
quite a bit more than that but they you know it's just been a defensive struggle I think even though there's been a lot of offensive stats both teams have played tremendous defense. Ryan Stortz arguing for an illegal substitution. Look at this Rogers to the outside shield will give chase. And they're not going to get him. Wheaton Warrenville South just about ready to put this one away. Matt Rogers a 37 yard touchdown run. 27 17. Wow. If you thought they're going to fall on the ball join the crowd. A relatively safe play though. Flow going to where the back is going as you watch right here. You know he tosses the ball and everybody goes in one direction but he hangs on to the ball so he never handed it off in a reverse. They just faked the reverse action. Which could have been resulted if you had two more people handing the football then you got a problem. But there finally as we talked about in the second half Matt Rogers had to become involved in the game for Wheaton Warrenville South to be successful and he has. And they are being successful at this point. A few minutes ago it was O'Toole that thought he had scored on a. 54 yard touchdown run it was called back by way of penalty. And now this one is for real. Welker for the extra point. An 11 point difference with 148 to play Lake Zurich no timeouts remaining. Wow. What a great ball game. Great football game. Really well played. That sideline right there has to hope for something pretty magical to happen right now. And that man's expression has not changed all night. Whoa, wait, oh, a glimpse of a looks smile. Like a smile. <laughs> Ron doesn't like to smile till after that gun goes off to end the ball game with his team on top. He tries to keep that composure at game face right up until that. That final whistle blows. See Matt Rogers firing up his sideline. His run took care of that. Well, if we do think we have a great game in this one, 7A, indeed we do. But coming up in about 40 minutes or so, maybe less, we've got an outstanding one shaping up in 8A, Maine South and Mount Carmel. You talk about tradition in programs and in championship games. Main South four state titles Mount Carmel with 10. Well it's a very very much a mirror of the game we're having right now. Those two great programs. So we've got these two outstanding programs from Chicago area. Those two Chicago area programs. Some great football tonight. Bounces in front of Millard's. That's exactly who they wanted to give it to. No disrespect to Millard's. We gave a choice between a fullback. John Millar's on the far side of the field and your tailback Jacob Brindley in the near side you kick it to number 34. And now it's must score and must score in a hurry. There's a good shot of Brian Stortz has done an outstanding job at Lake Zurich. We'll give you a chance clean games maybe to get yourself a cup of coffee but then you come right back Mount Carmel Main South coming up next 8 8 championships. About short gain are actually a little loss on the play. They got it out to Mike Schnur, the tight end. Schnur, an interesting season. Schnur, the returning starter at right guard, injured early in the season. He missed a couple of games. Mike Hemmond replaced him. Hemmond missed all of his junior year with a torn labor in his right shoulder. When Schnur returned, they put him at tight end. Every lineman's dream to catch a pass, and he now gets one in the state championship game. And he caught four going into the game. Till open down the middle the catch is made Mark Dorfman and that is the play they ran that Till fumbled earlier in this quarter and he was wide open down the middle of the field. Yep. Twenty two yards to Dorfman. That may have been the key play of the game. That was about half hour ago. Lake sure. Zurich quickly to the line. Till again. Dorfman did he get himself in bounds. No. Second down, clock stop, minute 26. A two score difference. Nice attempt by Dorfman. 
Good throw by Zach Till on the run. Till just a junior, he'll be back. They were able to do this, not in this kind of situation, but they did a little more of this against St. Rita and Simeon in their other two playoff games. Lynn unable to get out of bounds. The clock continues to move. It's interesting to watch the Wheaton Warrenville South coaches on the sideline trying to help the officials by swinging their arms and make sure that the clock keeps running. Bears get set very quickly. Nice job by Till. It'll be one yard short of a first down on fourth down, but he stops the clock with 62 seconds to play. Coming hard after Till on that play was Will Davis. He's He's done a nice job getting upfield. You can see we're coaching right up until the last minute and two seconds. Ron Muhich. Now he's a former defensive coordinator when before John, when John Thorne was the head coach, Ron Muhich was his defensive coordinator. John Thorne retired, then went to North Central College in Naperville and has done a tremendous job there. And Ron Muhich took over as the head coach nine years ago and has averaged 10 wins a game a year since then. So not much of a transition there between a great coach to another great coach. That ball is free and it doesn't matter because it was fourth down and it will be Wayne Warrenville South Bowl, 57 seconds away for the state championship. The Till Brindley exchange never happened. Nothing to do right now for Brian Stortz in his fifth year. He has a state championship, he has a second place finish. There'll be another trophy in the Lake Zurich trophy case. We'll take a look. I think what Ron Muhich is trying to do right now, they have a timeout. They're trying to make some substitutions to get some other kids in the ball game. Now what you would like to do is somehow construct it in such a way so that you can take your seniors out of the game from the middle of the field to your sideline. Right, but those choreographed routines don't actually always happen because oftentimes that second kid in that's really hasn't played maybe that much during the season is off yelling at the fans and cheering with the fans or hugging a cheerleader or whatever and he doesn't pay attention and he's got a chance to get in the ball game or he's waving up at his parents you can see right there how they might be a little distracted that fumble recovery will be credited to Brandon Peterson I think I was a little presumptuous here. He's not staying with the regular team. They're just going to go to their kneel down. Wade Warrenville South came into this game, top ranked team in the state. In many people's eyes, the very best team in the state, regardless of class. And in fact, in the national voters' eyes, that was the case. USA Today, their most recent poll, had them 13th in the country. Another rating service had them at number three in the nation. And Lake Zurich stood with them toe to toe all night long. It doesn't mean a whole lot to those folks right now. But you'll look back and you'll say, what a 7A game we had as Wheaton Warrenville South. We'll just now keep an eye on that scoreboard clock. Rod Muich finally says, okay, congratulations, guys. Am I allowed to go on the field for Muich? It will be his third state championship in a row and an ice water bath. Okay, yeah, clean those ice cubes out of that collar. The seventh state title for Wheaton Warrenville South in their history. 28-17 over Lake Zurich. Here it comes, Ron. Here it comes, Duck. Oh, yes. I hope that's waterproof. It's the last thing he's worried about. Got a quick glimpse at Riley O'Toole played his last high school game. The next game he plays at the collegiate level will quite likely be right here on his field is a University of Illinois commitment. And he did what he wanted to do, win the state title two years in a row and do it with his senior friends. Well played football game by two well coached football teams. A very quiet group of Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers. That's how Ron Mewich described his team. They have been businesslike all year long. Their motto this year 
better than yesterday. Well, you can't get much better than what they did last year winning the state championship. They duplicate that feat here today. Your 7A champions, the Tigers from Wheaton Warrenville South. Your final score in the 8A game, Wheaton Warrenville South 28, Lake Zurich 17. More coming up from Memorial Stadium. The 7A championship game has been brought to you by Country Financial. We do the same. With as many players as these two teams bring to your state championship game, it takes a long time to go through that handshake line. You see Ron Zook making his way through that line, and what a great 7A game we had, won by Wheat Warrenville South over Lake Zurich. Dave Bernard along with Jack McInerney back at Memorial Stadium. A lot of folks, you know, you talk to all week long, Jack. They, they had all the clippings for Wheat Warrenville South, everything that was told about the Tigers, completely true. A lot of people didn't give Lake Zurich a lot of credit or even a chance in this ball game. And you and I had seen Lake Zurich uh, up close and personal. We knew that this was going to be a great ball game. It's a heartbreaking loss for them, but really what a great accomplishment for Lake Zurich to play as hard and as valiantly all game long. Well, this entire 7A bracket was loaded. A lot of people talked about, you know, all the good teams from this. In the northern area, all the, the powerhouses were in the 7A, which I, I don't completely agree with because this next game coming up has got two of the best ones. But with that said, 7A was loaded. And it turns out that a lot of people thought when they saw Glenbard West and Wheaton South in the same bracket, that that would be the state champ whoever came out of there. No people, nobody ever talked about Lake Zurich. A lot of people thought St. Rita would be in this game. But Lake Zurich, to their credit, Played two really outstanding teams. They lost to an outstanding St. Rita team. They lost, or excuse me, they beat an outstanding St. Rita team, and they beat an outstanding Simeon team from Chicago. So they had a really a tough road to hoe to get here. And a lot of people just, you know, they flew under the radar, and they were an outstanding and are an outstanding football team. Well, you can't overlook the fact not only were they 2000. Seven state champions. They have been here numerous times in his title game in recent years. This was their third appearance in the last five years to get down there. Well, you can see everybody making a quick comment before they go over to the to the trophy presentation. That's a tough speech right there. That's a tough talk. It's not a speech because the speech is prepared. He wasn't prepared to lose. He was prepared to win. That's a tough talk that you have to give to a team, but. I can guarantee you what he's telling them is they really played like men today and they, they served the community in the high school as proudly as anybody could. I mean they battled right down to the last second. Great effort on their part. 2016 for Lake Zurich finished second in the state to St. Rita. They coined the slogan we are relentless. And of course a lot of schools a lot of teams have a slogan every year but that we are relentless theme has stayed through the years and of course after that 2006 second place finish the Bears came back and won it in 2007 coincidentally enough right here against the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers that was a seven to three game and in that ball game thinking back that was one of the great defensive games that had been played down here one of the most exciting seven to three games and here though the final score 28 17 it looks like an 11 point difference it's much closer than that well yes yeah, that, that score is very deceiving the game was extremely well played right up until the last minute and just a breakaway run that made that score look like that but we had a heck of a football game. Now each of these teams will slowly make their way to that award stand. Don't forget we have an 8 a game coming up. A lot of the people that are here have to take a deep breath and get themselves settled back in the Wheat Warm Business South and Lake Zurich fans of course will be leaving the stadium they'll be doing their own celebrating or commiserating I guess if you want to look at it that way and it will leave Maine South and Mount Carmel here to battle for the 8 8 championship and you get a good look at Jacob Brindley one over the 200 yard mark for Brindley he set the school rushing record career rushing record formerly held by Mike Stump he broke that record in the first round of the playoffs and uh, you see Ron Mewich making his way over to that stand. He's become very familiar with this south end zone. He really has, and Ron is a, a tremendous sportsman. I'll tell you, he's probably already talked to Coach Stortz about what a great job he's done, congratulated him on a great game and what a great effort his team put forth. And that's kind of Coach Ron Mewich is. Two outstanding coaches, two outstanding teams, and one heck of a 7A state title game. You know, and you talk, you look at the, the players in those white jerseys for Wheaton Warrenville South, and 
defending champs. Okay, so they, they have that monkey on their back. They're on ESPNU in the second game of the season against Maine South, who had just come off of two straight 8A championships. They defeat Maine South handily, and now the pressure just keeps mounting. Not only do you have to win every game, you have to dominate every game, and you have to stamp yourself as one of the top teams in the country and yet they handle that pressure beautifully here tonight. Well, they really they really did, and the other parts that I pointed out earlier is the fact that they play in probably the toughest conference in the state, and that's what really led to this foundation. When you play that kind of competition week in and week out, those kids eventually get better because they're not only practicing against good players, but they're then playing against tough competition. So this, when they get into the playoffs, it's nothing more than a conference game for them because all their conference teams, they had four conference teams in the state playoffs this year. So that's the way it is when it comes to football up in the Chicago area, especially 7A and 8A. Second place medals being <laughs> hung around the necks of the administration. Lake Zurich High School, and now the players will get their opportunity to put that around their neck. Many of these players were just watching from the stands back in 2007 when they saw their older brethren get the second place medal. J.J. Raffleson right there, at obviously, very bitter loss for him. You take a look at Brian Stortz. Uh, one of the names we talk about, Ron Mewich, who established a name for himself. Brian Stortz, it's about time folks uh, stood up and took notice of what this young man has done there at Lake Zurich High School. Well, the coaches know. Uh, you know, the coaches in the, in the coaching fraternity know about the job that he's done up there and the programs that are around the Chicago area and the strong ones and the ones that have great tradition and put out a great product. And he's one of those coaches that has done a tremendous job, as well as Ron Mewich. And you know the acclaim is well deserved when you get teams that are constantly in the state playoffs and hit, get to the level where they get in the state championship game several times that's quite an accomplishment by anybody pictures being taken of Rappleson and others holding that second place trophy it's not the the smiles and tears of joy that they would hope but then their fans in the back end and this of the end zone this is one of the things that is really nice about how things are set up here at Memorial Stadium because as soon as the game is over the fans of course in the stands will clap for their team and then they'll head for that south end zone so they can show their support right there in front of that awards team. It really is a neat tradition it started uh, when they came down here with Champagne and when they when they developed the stadium end down there because uh, fortunately enough when I was down here in 2001 with Donald Grove South it was such a neat feeling to be down there and then all your fans come racing from the sidelines or the, or the side part of the 50 yard line they get down in the end zone there and they can be right near you and it's such a warm feeling to be down there as you're raising that trophy to your fans and your family it's just a neat experience for uh, both teams be a lot of mothers of the players of Lake Zurich they will have to give their sons a hug it was a mother's club they call themselves the mama bears and they'll have to take care of their little cubs right now because it's a very very tough night for them when you battle one of the top teams in the country and you have an opportunity you have a lead in the fourth quarter but instead you have to exit that podium with the second place trophy and the folks in the white jerseys they'll get to head up there for the second consecutive year and the seventh time in school history as Wheaton Warrenville South goes back to back they match Montini who earlier today went back to back for the state championship that coming in class 5a it's been a long road it's a lot of work you talk about a 14 game season you have all those extra weeks of practices Ron Newich a little bit of a smile right there and it's more about pride and he thanks his Wheaton Warrenville South fans it doesn't get old there's no doubt about it I, I've only been up on that podium once and I just can't even imagine that being up there more than that and as often as these people have and it never gets old because you know you work so hard to, to the finished product is being up on that podium at the end of the season after 14 games just imagine that and after they you know they'll give them a week or so off and they'll be back in the weight room and then again you're looking to that following Thanksgiving weekend can we get up on that podium can we get a ring so those are the kind of things that that is difficult for coaches to get into the kids heads about what it takes to get here you know you can't talk about it you got to act on it. You got to work at it. That off-season weight program, the summer weight program, the seven on sevens in the summer, all those things lead to being up in that podium and hoisting that trophy up above the heads of your teammates. So for the second straight year, we can say your 7A champions, the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers, the state champs, Dave Bernhard along with Jack McInerney 
with you here back up high atop Memorial Stadium as the celebration goes on down below us. Let's take a look at our highlights from the second half of this ball game. What a great half it was. Great, great football. This is John Millars. He goes in for the one-yard touchdown run, and with that, Lake Zurich takes the lead. Wheat Warrenville South, though, not to be denied. Not when you're Riley O'Toole. O'Toole looks to Ryan Crow. That was a big reception. Get the ball inside the 40-yard line for the Tigers as they just march their way back, playing with a supreme level of confidence. Matt Rogers wasn't very active in the first half. He came up big in the second. That puts Rogers into the end zone for the touchdown dive of a yard. And with that, Wayne Warrenville South went back on top. Rogers, though, was not done. Jacob Brindley had something to say about some action as well. He gets down there, not an opportunity to go all the way as Brindley was held down a little bit in the second half. Key play of the game right here. Jake Till had a man open downfield, didn't see him. The ball's popped loose. It's recovered by the Tigers from Wheaton Warrenville South. And with that, Riley O'Toole takes control. A quick little pitch to Rodgers when folks thought they might run out the clock. But instead, Matt Rodgers will go 37 yards down that right sideline. And that was it. That was the icing for Wheaton Warrenville South. The Tigers, back-to-back -back state champs here. Your final numbers in this ball game. You take a look at Lake Zurich. The big rushing numbers, not so much in passing. That's what they did all year long. On the other side, the balance for Wheaton Warrenville South, about that 60-40 ratio we talked about past the rush. And in either case, with a lot of great defense here tonight, the offenses still had their level of success. They really did. It was an awful lot of offense. It was just an exciting football game from start to finish with the various turnovers, big plays called back because of penalties, and just everything that you can imagine. The dramatics of a state championship game were in this football game. In the end, though, it's Wheaton Warrenville South 28 17 winners over Lake Zurich for the 7 8 championship. And we're not done here at Memorial Stadium just yet. We've got an 8 8 championship yet to come. Stick around. It's Maine South and it's Mount Carmel and it's the 2010 IHSA Football Championships brought to you by Country Financial. State championship coach in Class 7A hails from Wheaton Warrenville South. His name is Ron Muich, and he's standing by with Aaron Bennett. Coach Ron Muich, Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers back-to-back -back state champs. How's that one feel? Feels great. We had to earn this one. It was a tremendous battle. Uh, very much a, a great effort by uh, Lake Zurich. You know they played us tough. We were behind a couple of times. We haven't had that all year. Uh, really stretched us uh, offensively. Uh, just like they, we thought they were going to do. And, uh, you know, we made some big plays and very proud of how our team stepped up with the pressure all year. You know, coming into this game, I thought this would be a test of, of, of a real true champion, whether we could take, you know, what I thought was a very outstanding defensive team. They did some great schemes, uh, you know, and we were down people, you know. You, the injury uh, factor in our receiving core coming into the state championship depleted a lot of things and we had to do some things differently and I'm really proud of how our kids responded and uh, you know they're tough they're, they're a great football team and um, you know they'll, they'll go down on one of the ones that I'll remember in terms of just being a fun group of kids a great group of kids uh, and a kid that, you know that were tested at the end and stood tall. Coach, congratulations. Go much. celebrate. Coach Ron Muhich, the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers, a special night. They are your 7A state champs.